Welcome to the EST Hangout. This is the EST Hangout, and today's guests are... It is the EST Hangout presented by White Claw Hardest Seltzer right here on Edmonton Sports Talk Live on TuneIn Radio, EdmontonSportsTalk.com, iHeartRadio, and YouTube. Matawani Tom Gazzola with you here. And joining us uh, today, uh, we've got Evan Dom from the Edmonton Elks. And uh, do I get to say from the Edmonton Elks with Dave Jameson? Like, do I, I get have a, the jacket, so therefore I am official. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. I'm yeah. Yeah. staff yeah. issue, so yeah. staff yeah. issue jacket. Like, yeah. It's one of those things where... I think when I was at Nate's, I've yes. interviewed you a little bit with the yes. Elks, but for the most part, uh, I've worked with you, and you were of mm-hmm. 1260. But now I get to go back to your real home, which is of the Edmonton Elks. You yeah. know what I consider? Which is I'm on a PTO. I'm like Chris for <laughs> Stieg. I'm Chris for Stieg. So I'm going to have a great camp and a killer preseason, and then Evan will cut me. <laughs> and then Calgary signs you. And then Calgary signs All me, right. and I come Very back cool. to haunt. Yeah. Yes. That's a very good analogy. I yes. love that. A good Chris for Stieg reference. Chris yes. for Stieg. I will well be play it if you go to the Stamps. Yes. I would be livid yes, if yes. you went to the You would catch down. on fire. Let's not kid ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a lot to discuss. You guys are wearing the beautiful jackets of uh, Edmonton there's Elks, Eskimo 75th season. Uh, Tommy's at the press conference today. I do quickly want... Dahmer brought us some glasses of the 75th. And today I will drink my White Claw watermelon from the 75th oh. anniversary glass because... It's beautiful. It'll You're only beautiful. enhance the flavor. It's oh just going to take yeah. it from a 10 to it's, a 10.5. Imagine being at the Elks tailgate drinking a, a White Claw. Or, that or, doesn't happen. No? Actually. What's that? Oh, it's not allowed? A White Claw? There's, or there's, there's, no, there's no beverages consumed. No. Just water at that. that. It'll be water. Yes. Yeah. Water so at, there's at those There's a lot of good cheer. Sparkling water. To the 75th of the, the Elks. Yes. To the 75th. How's that water? It tastes even better. It should. It's magical. All right. It's, it's very magical. Magical White Claw today. All thanks to the Elk 75th. Uh, how was Monday for you boys? It was excellent. I thought it went incredibly well, and we were very pleased with the turnout that we got. It was really cool standing in the room and seeing so many alumni, our current staff, our current players, our partners. It was like one big green and gold hug on Monday. So it felt good to kind of get it out into the world. Um, we've been working on it for a long time. The logo's been in the works for uh, a very long time. Um, we hinted at the on-field look. That's been in the works for even longer. So it was just nice to get it out into the world. And I think the energy in the room was yeah. not to say better than what I anticipated, but, um, you know, everything that we wanted it to be. I got yeah, the logo was, up on screen right it, now. So You know, there was a neat, there were a few neat moments. I mean, having Giz there is always, you know, yeah. quite special. But... Uh, Mike Smith Knutson, who was working with us on our all-decade selection committee, brought a number of his personal items from his collection, and it is extensive, and Evan has a probably an even better sense of what Mike's got in there. And he brought a ball from the 1954 Grey Cup team that was signed in the dressing room after the 1954 Grey Cup. And we had Jack Parker Jr., son of Jackie Parker, there with us uh, at the event. And to see him go over and look at that ball, hold that football, and then look for his father's signature was very cool. Very cool moment. I'm not going to lie to you. That was really neat in that room. I wish I could stay longer. I had to go to Beaumont for uh, oil stream that day. But, like, the memorabilia, authentic stuff, uh, I think... Dave, you told me from 2008 when you helped design the throwback re- retro jersey yes. with the mm-hmm. with the gold shoulders, the block letter E. Uh, you had to go back into like the the history books of mm-hmm. the, the franchise, and they had that jersey there from what was it the mid 60s? Yeah, well, they had they actually there was a really neat and, and forgive me, I, I forget the name of the production. Was it a heritage moment that they with on Normie yep. Kwong? Yep, exactly. So they recently shot a, what I guess would call a mini documentary. It was a you know a, a high end production piece, f- focusing and featuring um, the life and highlighting the high life and accomplishments of Norm Kwong. So they had a number of they had to reenact the football sequences. Oh, gotcha. So Mike Smith Canutes and super fan Mike um, in, Turf District, in, yeah Turf District, yeah. Um, bought the helmet that 
the actor portraying Kwong wore in that doc, along with the jersey. But we also had a, a royal royal retros, right? Yep. Um, from 1965 or 66, it was yeah. There were just an, a bunch of really cool touches. And then all the alumni yep. from every generation yes. had a chance to catch up with Eddie Steele a little bit. It was cool. Like it was legit. It, yeah. the, I like the way you described it, Evan. A big hug, green and gold hug. It really was. Like it was awesome. It was a reunion. Got to, and it, you know, the family, family reunion. It was yes. a family reunion. And then when when he when J Mo did the interview with me, I was like, "What the hell is going on right now?" I had to catch myself. J Mo was like, "A year ago, we were working together." <laughs> I remember my first time at Eskimos as just a snot nosed twenty one year old. And you like had to hold my hand basically when I was with the score that one right, time. Right, the score. Yeah, actually, a yes. few times I had to go there, and I was like, "Wow, this is insane." And then Domery did a great job as always. Thank you, appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, it was a fun day. Um, you know, oftentimes you have press conferences for the wrong reasons, and they're a big deal. Yeah. And this was a press conference for all the right reasons. So it was it was nice to get everybody together and. Um, yeah, it, it's just going to be a really fun season for us. And, you know, the 75th stuff is awesome, and we're very excited about that, and they'll be, you know, woven throughout the season. But then just some of the other game day stuff that we have going on is is fun too, and, you know, it's great that it's rolling out this season when we celebrate yeah. the anniversary. I'm looking forward to 1975 beer prices. <laughs> sure. <laughs> right? You're trying to get him to commit to that here on the fly. I thought it was worth a shot. It was uh-huh. worth a shot. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, I mean, we a nice quarter gets you a nice drink. <laughs> Give me beer. Yeah, that would be that would be nice yeah. too, actually. But uh, unfortunately, we don't have that quite. We're not I quite know. that magical down there, right. but still pretty magical. But you know what's really? I mean, there's so many you know sort of layers to the 75th, and I know what what Evan and his team are working on. But the the kickoff dinner on June 6th, typically or historically, the annual dinner has is late in the season. You know, and it allows you in that year to reflect on the year to that point. So there's, and it's great. And, and they've been doing it since 19, when did they start? The, it was in the 60s. 64, I think, was the first one. That, that's yeah. right, 1964. So there's obviously a lot of a lot of dinners have gone uh, gone uh, by. And West Montgomery, of course, uh, emceeing the, the vast majority of them. But this, you know, 75, you get one crack at this. Mm-hmm. And you get one crack at a chance to... Um, I tell your story and, you know, we, we've certainly with the fifties, you know, we're now talking to the offspring, the, the yeah. sons, the daughters, the grand, you know, kids of these, these legends, you know, soon, I mean, we, we none of us can outrun time. And so there is a, there's a feeling of, no, we got to do this right and do it up big. <clears throat> Halsey was there though. He's outlived. <laughs> So he's always there. <laughs> yeah, you take this one. Oh my gosh, right now, awesome. Awesome. He's not there. So yesterday we had our first all decade meeting, committee meeting, and we went over the fifties and the sixties and you know it's Mike Smith Knutson, it's Halsey, it's Blake Dermont, it's J Mo, and I just I just sit there and scribble a few notes down and soak it all in. Halsey was absolutely spitting fire. Every name that <laughs> came up, he had some great one-liners. It was unbelievable, and then some stories we can't can't share yeah, on yeah, here. Right. But it I'm was assuming so that much this fun. meeting that probably could take two hours is going six seven because Halsey keeps coming. We in. kept it tight, actually. It was very yeah. tight, but I'm telling wow. like, Evan awesome. is Evan's underselling it. There were little <laughs> pearls, little nuggets that he would drop, like we would, you know. Um, and I'm going to get the the terminology wrong, but you know. Okay, and we go, okay, flanker, you know, or whatever. And Mike Smith Knutson had done all, he's done all the legwork. It's really, you know, we're there, I guess, is what the sober second thought, you know, I to kind so. of vet the names and debate yeah. a little bit. Um, and Brian would have, like, remember that guy owned a gas station on Jasper with Jackie Parker? Like, it was <laughs> those, on. seriously. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it yeah. was it, it was, was very cool. So we're gonna have to once we have the teams decided, we're gonna have to sit down with Halsey and we're just gonna go, okay, Halsey, here's the name, tell us something. And he's just gonna give us gold. Like oh. he was just dropping the nuggets like it was nobody's business. It was it was actually so much fun. And then I'm sitting beside JMO and I just every once in a while I hear him like giggling. Like he's yeah. just having a great time. Yes. <laughs> it was yes. Awesome. What's well, crazy is usually JMO's the one with the story. Well, yeah. that's the wild thing too, right? Yes. Like I'm used to just you say something and then JMO's got the story, but you now have the guy that you're nah, listening to in this situation. Can't, I can't like, compete the on that level. Yeah, really. But you know what's funny was, we, you know, so the 1950s, uh, the the club, you know, it, it begins in 1949. And then they win three great cups in a row. So they're off and running. The first dynasty, 54, 55, 56. 
some of the greatest names to play football in this country are on those teams. You know, Kwong, Parker, Bright, Miles, Bill Smith, the former mayor, oh, on yeah. and on Don Getty. And then you get to the 60s, and things get a little quiet on the success front. That's very <laughs> nice of you. But we're going through <laughs> the names, and damn, that team may not have been very good or win a lot of games, but they had a hell of a defense. Like, it was an educational hour yeah. going through and learning about that period. You know, if they won a game, it was 9-8. And if they lost a game, it was 9-8. <laughs> like, it was that kind of... Yeah. Yeah, it was very cool. I mean, I'm not going to pretend to be incredibly well-versed in the history of the club in the 50s and 60s, but it was a great experience for me to sit there and listen to these stories from yeah. from Halsey. And, you know, again, like you would mention, you would mention a name and instantly... <clears throat> It was just like he had a scouting report on this guy. And you remember that game yeah. in 1954 when they're playing the Alouettes, and it's just like, oh, my God, like this is incredible. Um, it, was, it was so fun. And how many wow. of those players of those, of those eras, those, those decades, played but also were teachers? You know, in yeah. some cases like that 1950s, I mean, let's just reflect here. Kwong was a left-handed governor. Don Getty was the premier of the province. Peter Lougheed, who played... Prior to 1949, premier of the province. Yeah. You know, you go through Bill, Bill Smith, Smith, the mayor, mayor of Edmonton, and then on and on and on. And, you know, Brian recounting the, the you know, oh, that guy, he taught at JP. Yeah. And he was a great player. You know, it, it was just, it was fascinating. Yeah, it was it was a crash course in the history of the club, really, from its foundational point, and that community piece, superintendent for Edmonton Public School Board, yeah. and those type of things. So wow. it was awesome. Like that's where it started. The all decade team. What's the plan with it? Yeah, so we'll do know? we'll do a, an all decade team starting June fourteenth. So we'll do the fifties on the fourteenth of June, and then we'll roll the ones out, sub, uh, you know, subsequently. And the two weeks before at home games at the home games, yep. yeah. And then the two weeks before our regular season finale, October twenty fifth, will be a window for fans to select the all time team based on the all decade teams. So those will serve as the ballot for the all time team. So Terry Vaughn, Terry Vaughn, that's my oh, boy. Of course, I want you Terry Vaughn somewhere on that. I saw the autographed 8x10 in your office there. Thank you. I won well, that at a uh, silent auction. I bid on it and won at a silent auction for uh, the hockey showdown. So I, once I saw it, I was like, that's mine. Like yeah, straight up, awesome. no one else has taken it. I can tell you, and we, I think we all, as much fun as we had yesterday, we know that actually the 70s and 80s are going to be a lot of work. Like, inter and good yeah. work, like fun. Well, the, oh, cutting, the, cutting down. Like, because there's so much. Well, we just, as it's, as we're breaking yeah. up, we're like, okay, let's have some fun here. Quarterbacks that don't make the cut. Yeah. In, yeah there's going to be some hall, hall of Famers. The hall of Famers. Jeez. You know, like Matt Dunnigan, it should be, would be anywhere else, a slam dunk. Yeah. Uh, you sure? Yeah. Who's going to tell how many, play, how many maybe, players are getting a name to each decade team? It's a depth chart based on the era. So there's going to be one player at each position. One at each position? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So only one quarterback for the 80s. Yeah. Jeez. I guess. <laughs> Good luck. Have fun. Wow. Yeah. That's why we, we're going to leave the hardest decisions to the fans, though. That's why we for pass the, the buck. Yeah. The yeah. Smart. Oh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. We'll step away and take it from here. Yeah. We're well, when you have brave. as many great cups team, great cups wins as this franchise has. 14. Second, based on franchise, not city, second most in the Canadian Football League. Correct. Based on the history, 34 straight playoff years. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of good to choose from. Yes. There and is. then even in the in, in the years where it was down, mm -hmm. there's still a lot of good players that have come through here. Well, right? someone we, raised, yes, where are you going to put Fred Stamps? Like I, yeah. And one of the discussions, uh, sidebar, wasn't in yesterday's meeting, was that I had with the Blake Dermott on a call. And it, there, you know, you have players who have had long careers and they have been, you know, I, I, I use the term foundational well, I guess that does apply. I mean, there are stars and the superstars. They're obvious. You know, like a Ricky Ray. Okay, no kidding. You know, a Warren Moon. Sure, kids, mm -hmm. of course. You know, we know them. But then how do you differentiate between that superstar, that slam dunk, wall of honor, hall of fame, and then the player who's put in 13, 14 years and been really an integral part? Are they... Are they worthy of, you know, do they make that cut? Yeah. Like, how do you, those are hard calls. Like, anyone working Hockey Hall of Fame or, you know, baseball or, you know, Canton or whatever, those conversations are not as easy as outsiders might think. Yeah, like, don't forget 
uh, beaten, left screwed guys like that. No, the O line of the early right? 2000s. Like, yeah. The this Hawks team was just. And I expect you to lead the campaign for Bertrand Barry. Thank you very much. Yes. And uh, Roman yes. Reigns, who was a, a ask at one point. Honorary mention. Yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, Super fan Mike's in the nasty chat saying Halsey's a legend. Quote, now listen, Ted Tully was Jackie Parker's business partner in a gas station that I used to go to every Friday. He yep. also adds 1980s quarterbacks, Warren Moon, Matt Dunnigan, Damon Allen, Tracy Ham. Pick one. Huh. It's tough. Yeah. It's yeah. tough. Who wears the headset in that group? Yeah. That's a crowded quarterback room. No, no doubt kidding. about that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So now, could somebody be part of an all-decade team in two decades? Or is it? Are, do you guys have it eliminated where someone would, if they go into... Like Ricky Ray, 2000s, he can't be 2010s, like however that is. Yeah, that's you guys have that? We had that yesterday. That, that's what we discussed yesterday is we don't – we want to try and acknowledge as many guys as possible, so we're going to keep guys in one decade as best we can. So nice. there's oh, some tough decisions there too. Yeah. Don Getty crosses over. Yeah, right? there's some splits that are uh, four there, five there. Like, okay. How do you do it? So I like including as many as possible. That's good. Um Funny, just really as an aside, speaking of those 70s and 80s teams, mm -hmm. um, when the Boston Bruins were in town, we were at Kelly's, surprise, surprise, Boston media wanted to go to an Irish bar, and they were looking at all the pictures, and there's a bunch of old-esque stuff, and they're like, who's that guy? Flowing, like, mullet, but mm -hmm. still late 70s, mm -hmm. big, big nose, like, big jaw, looks like he would kill you if you mm -hmm. got him mad, but a huge smile on his face. I had to take a picture and send it to my dad. He's like, I think that's Marco Sinkar. And I was like, ah, I don't know. I looked him up. I'm like, I don't know. The sync car was later on. Brian Fryer. Oh, okay. Brian Fryer. And then when I mentioned it to the, uh, oh, the yeah. Boston crew, they're like, I think I know who he is. Like some Played. of the older Boston media yeah. guys. Like stuff like that is kind of neat. Played for the Redskins. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's. And a unbelievable athlete. That's the other thing. I mean, you know, going through it with Halsey yesterday, some of the anecdotal stuff, you know, outside of the, you know, deciding who should be on or off the team. Was him describing like an Oscar Kruger? Mm, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. that was a good description. I mean, that was like you know, lit. <laughs> that was one of his it stories. starts with you know he became a lawyer, and then it's like and an amateur boxer. Oh, and then he was this and that, and I mean, mult like five tool guys that could play not just football. Yeah, that's you know that's why we're there and talking about him, but all the other sports they did. Wow. A lot of those guys did a bunch of other, you know, oh, he was a great rugby player. And it's like, oh, God, okay, sure. Damn. Yeah, and that's carried right through um, yeah. to our to our current guys. And, you know, you think of Ed Hervey and his track prowess, sure. right? Like there's a lot of guys who mm -hmm. are are very adept in that area. Kevin Brown's down south right now teaching, teaching high school track. Is he really? Yeah. So there are guys that have so many tools in the toolbox, and it's it's impressive to learn about it. Well, and Chris Morris, one of the more recent generations of the the yeah. regular job mm -hmm. with football too. Yeah. Where you, I remember you've told the story many times of practices having to be late with those two thousand Eskimo teams well, because had he to had vote. to. He had a. He, he was a teacher. Did they still do that? Do they vote on prior? Is they given a no, choice there's anymore? no vote. There's yeah. no vote. Okay, well, back, <laughs> back when we practiced, oh, practiced you have to deal with a vote. When we practiced <laughs> democracy, uh, yes. um, it was put to a vote, and you had morning or afternoon, and you just need one nay, and it was, you know, um, and every year they would do it, and they would offer it up, and then it was, okay, I guess we're, we're going afternoons for Chris. It's really the last team in Canada to practice. Hmm. You know, you'd have, like, an Eastern reporter go, are you still on the field? We're like, yeah, they've turned the lights on at Clark. We're Damn. practicing. Because, you know, he would have a full crazy. day. He would yeah, have a full day at teaching. school or, yeah. you know, close to a full day. And then, uh, you know, but we, we had Carlo Pinero come right from the U of A in his scrubs. Right. He would come in after an all-nighter in the scrubs, get changed, and we'd go and jump on the plane. He was a surgeon. Is a surgeon. He yes. A surgeon. He does. He is like one of the top knee replacement, hip replacement people in the city. Good. I need him. Oh, what are you having need? some trouble, a are new you? Knee. Yeah. You need a oh, new knee? Yeah. You need a new knee? Eventually, yeah. Ooh. You're just forecasting? You no, just, no, <laughs> no I do. Oh, oh, you've been told. I've you can just put me. Uh, yeah. yeah, just get, so, get on the wait list May 15th, early. May fifteenth, twenty forty-five, please. <laughs> yeah, that's put me in. I want Mr. Panero. Uh, Dave Jameson says uh, he's good. To he's go to do fantastic. It yeah. Yes, but that is insane. That is cool. Were there? You mentioned Clark Stadium. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's an integral part. It's a public uh, field. The high school football, I believe, is is back there now. It was part of the soccer team, football team. I'd used it for ages. 
Uh, were there a lot of Clark Stadium stories when you were talking with Halsey and some of those guys? It wasn't so much about the setting as, as the personalities and the individuals. So we didn't get to that point yesterday. I'm sure we'll have some Clark Stadium stories down the road, but it yep. was really about the guys and what they accomplished and what they did yep. and, uh, yeah, some of their shenanigans as well. Oh, ah, yeah, well, there was some of that, wasn't there? Yeah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> There's shenanigans <laughs> here, though, too, to be fair. Yes. 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 Like There's that. always shenanigans with this crew. Like, Dave. Like that A and W song I no. heard coming in. <laughs> that was. The, yeah. no do you have that already clipped? Could we? No, I don't have that clip. I mean, we just followed the work work tuba players. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like how? No, that, you know. that we're serious here at ESD. Yes. Only serious. Only serious. Serious sports. Talk. As you guys both know, yeah. you can't. You cannot have fun in sports media. No, it's all about oh, only the game and the now? numbers. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't know we in lawed it. Yeah, it's very serious business. Do others matter, boys? Well, they do. Yes, like, yes, yes. They do. Yes, they do. We're gonna. Is this your second? No, way we're to not. Dive no. Into, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't, uh, tightly played game. No, last we, we think oh, I'm going to talk about the Elks. Uh, yeah. Keyword for the EST Flyaway, presented by FlyYG and the LVCVA, coming up just after 10 o'clock here on the EST Hangout. So stay tuned for that keyword. I'm going to get mocked for this keyword today. I'm pretty sure. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Dave Jamison, Evan Dom, Tom Gazola, Matt Awanek with here on the EST Hangout, presented by White Claw, the heart seltzer that started the wave, made with refreshing real flavors for the iconic taste white claw the difference is clear there's like a lot to get to for the 75th season um let's let's go back to the logo um, ah. because there's a lot that's involved with said logo it's not just the logo it's got meaning i'll put it back up on screen and i like the on the hoodie like first of it's, all nice hoodie Dahmer. but the the logo got a like nice the jacket. crusting on the logo is like it's got the raised um is that stitching is that, stitching is that it's it's uh, i don't know what the technical term is i'll ask jen our director i believe it's it's uh, nice tackle yes. well. that's, yeah it's that's not really uh nice. it's not heat pressed not heat pressed and that's yeah. important i was i was in the shop the other day and i was looking and i saw like there's a nice hoodie with like the old style mm -hmm. striping yep. at the bottom of the the sleeves and then the turf bottom tradition stuff the turf yep. traditions yep. which is great i have both hats from the last two seasons but then the the classic double e logo was heat pressed but then the elk logo which is also beautiful uh had the nice stitching i was like damn Goox.com for 75th anniversary. Yes. Mark. You can buy it right now. Um, do you want to get into the logo? Well, you know, it, for for logo nerds and uniform nerds, this is like my favorite thing is is going through the logo and going through the process. So we started this uh, with the local designer, Curtis Agrodiak, whose art slinger is his, his company. And I've worked with Curtis in the past on uh, the Canada West rebrand and a couple other projects. So I reached out to Curtis and started it and sort of said, you know, you give them the design brief and, you know, this is what we're looking to incorporate. Here are some of the key elements, um, you know, kind of take it from there and spit something out and, and we'll tweak it. And uh, Curtis is, is very easy to work with and uh, nice clean lines on this logo. And obviously there's some components that really... I think symbolized the city and the club, the skyline, the lights from Commonwealth Stadium. Um, probably my favorite touch was I said, we got to find a way to tell people that we're 14 time Grey Cup champions. So we used the flash bulbs from the stands. Really nice. Um, and then, you know, we've got the original double E logo there, which really, again, represents the alumni. That's, that's part of the alumni logo and represents the formative days of the club. So, um, it's a logo. Not everybody loves it, but the vast majority have expressed that that they really like what People it don't love symbolizes. It. I saw what? one person on Twitter saying that's just ugly, and I, I was fair enough. Why yeah. are you judging Twitter based off Twitter? That's true. That's true. That could be some sort of bot that just is upset for no, whatever reason. No, there's people. It, I, I haven't the seen the overwhelming it's feeling. Very is positive, it's very yeah. good, and people. I think it, it, the touch of nostalgia, the modern skyline, like it, it's really nice. I like how the seventy five rises out of the skyline. Uh, the other thing, too, I was at the shield uh, shape. Mm -hmm. Does, is that hearkening back to, like, the original, original logo? Did I catch that correctly? Yeah, yeah yes. we pulled okay. that from the very first sort of... It wasn't a logo that was on a helmet or a jersey or anything. It was, like, the club's business mark, essentially. Yeah. yeah. And um, that's where we got the shield from. It, it's, a, it's a nice, powerful... It, it's, a, it's sort of a tight design, so we like that. The shield look will... Um, carry through and some other things we're doing this oh, year you don't say with uh yeah we will have a new we'll have a new jersey which we'll unveil on on you know debut it at that june 8th home opener and there's uh, a take on that 
that original logo on that jersey. So we'll start to drop some more nuggets as we go along here. And but. this logo is going to be on the helmet for the first game, but only helmet. the first game. Only the first game, nice. and it's an opportunity for fans to be on the decal again. So cool. we did that last year with the double E for the home opener. People yeah. could purchase their spot and put their name on there. And we're doing that again this season. They're they're moving well again this this year. We sold that out in less than a, less than a week last season. So if if you want an opportunity to do that, it's the in the game decal and uh, shop.goelks.com. Very cool. Shop.goelks.com. Yes. He's got it even better. He's got the direct. You don't have to go to the website and click something else. You just go no. direct to the site. Uh, Dahmer, uh, okay. The graphic when in the in the video when you guys unveiled it, it was pretty cool how like everything rose up, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of like building towards the seven. Like sim, I look into dorky stuff like that. I love it. Um, but like this, like did you and the artist like did you say, okay, here's what I'm thinking. What are you thinking? Like how much of it was you? How much of it was it him? Or did you have it's some always, parameters that you outlined? Yeah, it's always a collaboration. So um, it was Curtis, myself, and our our staff designer Daniel, who has has really brought the look to life. He's mm -hmm. he's incredible. I can't say enough good things about what Daniel does for the club and what he does for us visually. So it started with me sending Curtis bullet no notes, basically, and saying, this is what I want to see. This is what we need to symbolize. Um, him coming back and us going back and forth a little bit. And then he got it to, to a very close to complete stage. And then Daniel and I just did a couple of small tweaks uh, to get it over the finish line. So it's a collaborative process. It's a great process if you have a rapport with mm -hmm. the designer, which, um, you know, Curtis is very easy to work with. So it, it's just, it's fun. It's nerdy. You sit there, you think, mm, is that is that stroke wide enough? You know, are those flash bulbs big enough? Is right. that number, yeah. you know, all of those little details. So a lot, a lot goes into it. It's uh, really challenging to, and I worked on the 60 seasons. Was yeah. That the, the, and we wore that decal With the, the whole year. Yeah, I remember that. This is far more nuanced. It's a deeper... It's and there's storytelling within that within that logo, obviously, yeah. as Evan has has just explained. But it's really challenging to capture do what they're trying to do with a logo like this because it's not just putting slapping a 75 as a jersey crest, yeah. because this is is going to be the signature thing that remains. You know, years from now, you look back and you know it contains the foundational pieces of the franchise within you know a relatively small bit of real estate. Yep. Yeah. That's not easy. Uh, the alumni that that saw it, did you guys get a lot of reaction for them when they when they had it unveiled and, and looked at it for the first time? Well, I know knowing our guys, they'll probably go, "How do I get a jacket and can I get one free?" <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> but that's yeah, fine. We've had that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, but but all of that said, I mean, I think that, you know they'll look at that with with pride and see and 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 again, you know, because that's their home, Commonwealth <laughs> Stadium. That's you know, um, and 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 then they'll see that original double E and feel a connection, you mm -hmm. know. And I think and then that. That really, you know, if you want to just go back to, um, there is heavy connection, I think, between that logo and the, and the fans, right? Because fans of a certain age will see that and go, yeah, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, and I, I think it's, you know, we're in a we're in a a difficult position given you know the rebrand of the club a couple of years ago, and and we we're not here to really you know relitigate that, but mm. the the logo symbolizes the the Eskimo period. Really, it does, and that trying to bridge that that gap and the connection with sort of the modernity of where we are, which is 2024, and we're the Elks now, and we've had you know this this evolution, but we didn't want we didn't want the logo to necessarily say Elks immediately because 71 of our seasons have proudly been um, you know as as the Edmonton Eskimos, so we really wanted it to resonate with those people who have been along for the ride. So that was that was part of it as well. And that was a very conscious decision to have the double E on the logo. We're not going to hit you with antlers coming out of this, that, and the other thing mm -hmm. on this particular logo. Our our jersey will will be more of a of an elk's look in terms of, you know, having those those little pieces, but also again connecting with the past and we're we're kind of fighting this battle, but I think it was really important for us to just, you know, lean in on the, the heritage and the history of the club. Well, I, yeah, again, don't want to re you know reopen mm -hmm. up everything with the name change. But yeah. one of the reasons why it was supposed to be the Elks was stick with an E name because then double E is the history of this club. Yep. It is the double right. E. And that logo works for the entire history, yeah. Yeah. past, present, and future, because it's all double E. And that's why it's perfect that, that that's on there. Yes. And that's yeah. a good version of the double E, not going to lie. 
It is, it is my... It's my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I the 90s one is pretty good, too. Yeah, I think a lot of people who see it and they go, you know, there's, again, a little football shape in there. It's, you know, that's self-explanatory. But, uh, you know, what that was, that arrived in, what, 65, right? 65 or 66, yeah, somewhere 60s, in there? Yeah, yeah. Is when they first put it on the helmet. And, um, you know, right away, you don't, you didn't need to explain it. You yeah. Know? It just, and that's, the best logos are like that. You know, the Montreal Canadiens, the, you know, the Yankees or whatever. You see it, you go, okay, I know. I don't need any more information. Uh, What was interesting... Of course. Big season starting up this year. (laughs) Yes. Of course. Yes. What was interesting, (laughs) and I caught this detail. Thank you. I feel the exact same way, J-Mo, and Dahmer didn't even acknowledge your comment, Matthew. That's fine. Thank you, Dahmer. But he's a Jays guy over there. I am. Yeah, Yeah, I'm supposed to to care about Mm. what the Jays are going to do. Good luck making the playoffs. (laughs) Hey, Baltimore's a very good team. Yeah, Baltimore. Baltimore, Yeah, Yeah, there you go. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow, Jeff Kershell and actually the manager of the Riverhawks, uh, Jake Landferman, are oh, going nice. to come on. We're going to do a baseball preview tomorrow. Like it. That's it for me. May I? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. I'm done with the baseball stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, really quickly, I noticed from the 90s, uh, the Nanook logo uh-huh, was yeah. included in the evolution of mm-hmm. the logo. And I was like, oh, we're acknowledging this. All right. Now. Yeah, we are. I, yeah. It's go fun. Ahead. It's fun. It the is 90s fun. stuff is, is quote unquote in right now. It totally is. Whoever allows things in and out. But it's it's awesome. Like I look back at that logo and I, I think those logos, that should never be your primary logo for 20 years. Like no, let's no, just no, acknowledge no. that. But Short it's very cool. Life. <laughs> it's very cool in a, in a small dose. Yeah. So it's gonna be small in some of our, you know, visuals this season and we we're gonna have we're have a nineties theme night. It'll be June fourteenth, and that logo will be around. May I? Yes. Because that was supposed to be on a uniform. Of course you little can. known fact. Yes. Might we be seeing that uniform? Absolutely no chance. <laughs> no. No. So there's Come on. Uh, the, the, Go the, ahead, the Dave. story <laughs> around that. Um, okay, so it, 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 we'll just peel back to when the uh the Eskimos did a rebrand, uh, or we're trying to. Um, and Alan Watt at the time, our friend, who was the kid uh, from Bonnie Doon. Yes, the kid from Bonnie Doon. <laughs> yes, um, he was leading that and working with the firm in town. I think it was Great Scott Communications. And so they had quietly gone, or you know, they'd gone about the business of of freshening up this uh, venerable brand of the Edmonton Eskimos. And of course, the context of the time, you had the Memphis Mad Dogs. Yep. The Toronto Argonauts had their boat guy, and they, for I think a year, had a logo on the front, you know, yes. coming up. And the Mad Dogs and the Barracudas and all of that. So again, context of the time, right? It's beautiful. So there was pressure, like we got to get with the times, man. Come on, Edmonton. Like, let's go. Mm-hmm. So they did up a prototype with the polar bear coming up. From like, the side. Right? From the side, like like the Mad Dogs, like the Argos. So, um, and they did up a helmet and they had a, you know, new double E, which they ended up keeping on the side of the helmet. And uh, off they went. And then they, they took it around to people before they launched, before just to get a feel and they brought it into Hugh Campbell, and they laid it down. I think, I think they might have had the polar bear on the helmet, if I'm not mistaken. And if you don't have the graphic, it's a polar bear pulling his shirt like Superman and <laughs> yeah, revealing, yeah. revealing the E. And anyhow, yeah. all of that said. And they brought it in, and Hugh sat there, and they held it up and explained the jersey, and it had round kind of weird numbers, and it was like really trying way too hard yeah. to be cool. And he kind of looked at it and went, I don't think so. (laughs) And so what happened was Dwayne Mandrusiak just rescued the whole thing and went to the double E, Mm -hmm. you know, which they moved to in 97. Was it? Mm -hmm. Have I got the sword? Yeah. Let's just go 97. And it was a very classic look. It was a refreshed but classic look, a little different striping, a green face mask. And it looked great. You yep. know, and it served the served the team very well. But it was a nice kind of just a, it was just a refresh. But yeah, it uh, never got off the launch pad. But the polar bear was attempted. Yep. And I also saw a prototype of a silver helmet with a polar bear walking. Whoa! On it. And that didn't look good either. 
Okay. <laughs> um, so efforts were made. Yeah. And thank you, Wayne Mandrusiak and the Hugh Campbells of the world for being gatekeepers for the brand. Because somebody's right, got to do so. it. Yeah. Like I always, you know, talking to some people in the business, we always wondered what the conversations were like when, you know, a, some earnest young designer from Reebok or wherever, whomever, would go into like a Detroit Red Wings boardroom and say we've got a new idea for the winged wheel and they would present something and the red wings would just look at them and go no we're good and then they pack <laughs> yeah. up their stuff just and leave. have a nice day just no, do the no, same no, no. thing yeah no yeah, no, no, no. red it. white the wheel the wing we're good yep uh, thank you super fan mike has all the answers yeah 65 was the first year of that logo okay 96 for that new logo that you were discussing 96, so he's okay. got it all yeah. uh, it was just you, the one season though right that it was kind of in the public sphere W- w- the the, the witch, polar bear, the yes. polar bear, yeah. yeah. Okay, here. Well, I sort of killed it. Um, <laughs> oh, go on. No, the polar bear lived on ticket stock. It lived in advertising. It, it was, was on merch. It, it was on merch. Yeah. So it lived for a while. But I joined the club in 1998, and when I got there, you could. F- I mean, God, we were still carrying San Antonio Texan stuff in the little old team store over there. So, like, we oh, were not, right. it would, you know, again, it's a simpler time. Yes. No one likes the Texans. And, no, and, and so, team, so. I, you know, I'm looking at that old, terrible old sign outside the old building and still had the old double E on it. And I said, well, like, can we actually use the logo we have on our helmet now? Like, why did we not update this? And we changed the sign. And then we just started to rinse the polar bear out of... Right. Not, you know, he just, kills it, I bring it back. Yes, oh, yes, yes, oh, yes sir. Baby. But we just kind of <laughs> moved away. And what are we? We're that double E. Yes. We don't need anything else. And I think I, I had a, worked with a, um, a guy named Jim Nish, who was, like, I forget if he was Reebok or Adidas or something, and he, to design a word mark that went along with it. And we, you know, we just moved on. Collar? Yeah. The it was one there was forever, just, yeah. Yeah. And that and, and and that was it. Like, let's not. I, my thought, and you know, um, people like Evan are far more refined in their marketing <laughs> and ideas. So, but so I just refined. thought, I said, like, what? Why are we chasing yeah. fashion here? Yeah. So, well, this is what we are. Here's what I'll say about those jerseys, though, that never saw the light of day. Yeah. Do like a limited edition sell. Oh, read to them. Like a hundred T-shirt with that design. That oh, we'll there we jersey. go. Now we're a hundred jerseys. That's it. Very few. How about seventy five? Oh, nah, even better. There See, this, the, there's the PR guy that, and you know, all that. That's yeah. smart. Marketing guy. Yep. Do 75 of those. I, you know how long it takes to get a jersey from conception to <laughs> oh, forever. 18 months. Yeah. Jeez. And so. that's probably with everything going well. Yeah. Yeah. 16 to 18 months. Do pre-sale orders for the 75th. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. Just put now, them up there at pre-sale for we'll 18 months We'll do a pre-sale for the 80th. Now... Um, <laughs> The St. Louis Blues mm-hmm. also had the trumpet in that yes. same era. Yes. Should have been oh, Mike Keenan, like the day they were supposed to wear them, said not a chance in hell. So like Hugh Campbell, Dwayne Mandrusiak, yeah. a gatekeeper. And that was awful. that awful was the mid nineties. Mm-hmm. You and I were kids back then. You awful were, decision. You were Graphic an infant, disaster. But, yeah. That's awful. what those should have been worn. Gretzky should have been in those trumpet uniforms. He would have. It was that season. It would have been amazing. The LA Kings jerseys were horrendous. The uh, Burger King, yeah. 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 Gretzky but, did wear that one. You know, of yes. the time, yeah. everyone seemed to, to you know, not... And I, you go through periods of in design. Like, I don't think the NBA stuff right now, or even the NFL stuff, is creative or very good. Mm. You know, I, I just don't. I don't <sighs> see Arizona much Cardinals that... Were the, terrible. The, 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 the NBA has bad. nice um, theme nights ones. They do. Those yeah. are when they look good. But, but the regular ones, like, outside of, like, the Celtics and the Lakers and stuff, they're just classics. Just like we say with the Red Wings and the Habs, they're just good. Yeah. Um, but you're right. I, I don't think that in the regular NBA ones, there's anything too special. And yeah, NFL, I'm just trying to think. And like, this is not old guy talking. No. But when I turn on the television it's and, wise. And, I, and the Raptors it's are in gold, and I understand the Drake partnership, and I understand, I get all of that. <clears throat> mm. But I sort of have an expectation. I want to be able to identify you fast. Like, okay, you know, Celtics in green, thank you. You know, there may be some variations on that, but... You know, I, I just, uh, that to me is, is you know, I, I don't like to move off that too much. Doesn't mean I don't I mean, don't like change. I do. So j was happy when we said no to a potential black jersey. I agree oh, with him and I yes. have been discussing this for years. Do you guys have the idea of a black jersey? No. No, no, oh, no, 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 no. But no, I, I was, remember I like he and I, I said, please don't. Floated. I love it. Floated. But yeah. you and I have had this discussion 
over multiple years, it's the, the easy way out. For, we for, don't know what to do, so, so let's, let's do, do it in black. black. Yeah. And it's Paul Lucas, who, you know, you guys yes. Yes. watch. Jersey, and, and yeah, Jersey, the Jersey nerds out there will know he's sort of the, the god of, of, yep. of that, along with Chris Creamer. Yep. Um, and Paul Lucas, it's black for black sakes. And yeah. that's as it applies to design and sports jerseys. It's like, well, you're right. We don't know what to do, so let's, let's do a black uniform. Yeah. It's got to be part of the color of the team right. to work. Yeah. Like the Ravens do it. And Correct. It's, Part of it, it looks really yeah. sharp. Yeah, it yeah. does. It would look weird for the Elks. Absolutely, now, it would look very weird. I think that reminds me. But of they, the Elks also have the greatest color. Like, I, I, it's beautiful. U of A Elks, the colors yeah. of it all. I don't think there's a better color scheme. May I? Mm-hmm. The short-lived gold uniform, third alternate. You were there yeah, during that era. Yeah. Like, I think is I that, that going to pop up somewhere? Those no, our, nice. our our New Jerseys yeah. are not gold. I know they're not gold, but like, might we <clears throat> see an ode to them somewhere? Or are uh, they kind of do they get swept under the rug? Yeah, they they didn't necessarily bubble to the surface as far as no disrespect to JMO of no, things I, that we wanted to highlight for the right. 75th season. Wow. Not bringing back the jerseys he created. <laughs> bringing back I the mean, polar bear that well, he got rid of. Why is he on yeah, this squad? Yeah. Are you, you here to torture him? What is to this? To be honest, when they came out, yeah. I, I liked them as a kid. Same. But um, I all, I really like the 1960s ones, and I have a, I have a Ricky Ray one at home. Uh, but yeah, we we went with uh, we went with green as the focus. It, it is beautiful. I have to say. Let, let's not forget a simple thing like white pants. Yeah. Again, this is a story for those who were there at the time. So Dwayne Mandrusiak would go in, and it was a sort of rite of passage. It was like, okay, every spring, Dwayne would go in with a pair of prototype of white pants and would just walk to <laughs> Hugh Campbell's office, do a little tap on the door. Coach, you got a minute? And just hold the pants out. And <laughs> Hugh would go, uh, no. And Dwayne would go back to the dressing room and tuck him away and do it again the next year. Yeah. So... One year, I forget the exact, someone out there, Mike Smith, Knudsen, likely, we wore white pants with the green top. It was been done once. Yeah. It was done at home, I remember obviously. that. I, the game didn't end well for us, and it was, I think it was against Calgary, if I'm not mistaken. Was it the rematch game? Would have been a and I think game? somebody returned it, like, I think Moss threw a pick. And it was picked off at like their goal line, and they ran it back 325 yards. And, you know, like his, the guy was still running down 118th Ave, and it was just like it, it it didn't end well. And it was just like you're not we're not dressing like that again. Wow. And it, no more white pants at home. But then white pants became the thing we wore on the road. We won the Grey Cup in all white yes. in Regina in 03. Yes. Uh, and then we won um, um, with, I think, green pants in 05. Yes. If I'm not mistaken. That was a crazy And the white game. pants are great. So kudos to you guys on that. And yes. they came back last year. We wore them yes. Labor Day in Calgary. And then Love we wore that. them again again in Saswatchewan. I think we wore them twice, right. all white. Yes. Yeah. And, and they're and back they again this year. They're, they're fantastic. When you guys wore them on Labor Day, because I always... My hope, and this is me being selfish, is mm-hmm. to one day see the the classic green and gold with that logo at the Labor Day rematch or the Labor Day game, something like that. Yeah. Just putting that out to the universe. Not that anybody who has some sways in the room right now. But um, when you guys came out of that tunnel. Season ticket holder over in, here. In, in time, that time, I'm almost at 20 years. Uh, but when they came Seriously. out of that crappy tunnel at whatever is McMahon Stadium, it's barely a stadium, I'm just going to say. Uh, beautiful with, sight lines, though. I oh, stand yeah. by sight that. Lines. Beautiful but sight lines. It was yeah. just, it looked so clean, it so was really crisp. Great. And it, yeah. it told me that this was a special afternoon and a special game yeah. when I saw that. Yeah. Dan, our equipment manager, did a great job getting those ready to go. And it's it's the simplicity of it, too, right? It's stripes down the side. That's it. It's white stripes, double E. That's, Keep it simple. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. So. And look uh, we've mentioned Superfan Mike a few times. I, I do just want to then throw some love to the Turf District podcast. Yeah. This will come out yesterday. Donovan Alumba was on with them. Uh, you can find it on their podcast feeds. If you go to EdmontonSportsDoc.com, they're a friend of EST. Just go to shows, scroll down, click Turf District. It'll have the links to. Uh, I haven't put up this yesterday's episode up on the site directly yet, but the links to their podcast site. Um, and you could also catch it live Thursday right here on Edmonton Sports Talk on our audio channel, iHeartRadio, tune in, EdmontonSportsTalk.com. Uh, the Turf District, uh, yeah. They, Turf District so. is awesome, and it's awesome that you just admitted you haven't done your homework yet. It's not up yet. Should have been. Well, up. they just put up the episode yesterday. They just had it yesterday. 
what if I wanted it at uh, seven thirty when I was so what happens or before is I go to the Evans, NW song? So Evan, if you go to EmmonsSportsTalk.com, you click Turf District. There's the links to all their podcasts right there. It doesn't have the direct episode there, but you can still click to the link to their to Apple or Spotify and listen to it. He's got all the redundancies figured out. Or, it's quite meticulous. I just like to bust Maddie a little Thursday, bit when come on here. Yeah. Get the o- tiny mouse out and show me how to do it. <laughs> Thursday at seven o'clock, yeah. you can listen to them to SportsTalk.com. Perfect. Okay, so there's the. I'll put that in my, for us. my iPhone calendar. Um, Love it. Yeah, Donovan Ulumba uh, Elk on mm-hmm. with him. So we're, we're th- he's come up a lot today. So figured I'd throw some love that way. Uh, I, I wasn't sure that that Donovan had a cell phone, so I'm not sure how they tracked him down. <laughs> he was on video. Wow, he was on video, <laughs> full of video. That's amazing. I, Hernan's probably listening, and he can probably text me and say. If if we have a phone number on file for Donovan, because sometimes it's hard to get a hold of these guys. That's Nancy amazing. Oh listening. yes, and imagine, you know, in this day and age, to not have complete connectivity. Imagine what it was like. Oh my back god! When you had my to do time, it? and I will just share this. And I may have told. I know I've told this story when we used to be over uh, right on twelve sixty. I I'm looking for a guy in the off season. Like I, we had some requests to do some community stuff, and I'm. And I'm trying the one number I've got. And again, it's, you know, we're early days cell phone. We're rolling with some flips. Then we get into Blackberries. <laughs> we're not, not, you can't not get everybody's. On the, see if they're posting on Twitter or Facebook and be like this they're connected. No social media. There's no, Stop like the you either, you got a cell phone maybe and their home number. Where they have like, to be home for. Right. Like, hey, it's for you. And then hand the phone to the person. So I finally get this guy. And you know, after trying for weeks, and I said, "Hey, dude, well, like, where you been? You know, it's Dave. I'm up in Edmonton. I've I've been trying to find you. I've had some requests for you." And he goes, "I said, where you been?" He goes, "Ah, there's a pause." He goes, "Yeah, I've been in jail for a bit." <laughs> and I said, "What?" And he goes, "Yeah, just you know, some nothing minor big. details. Nothing big. Just a yeah, you know." I just I returned home. I just kind of had to get something dealt with, and I went, "Okay, terrific." So when are you back, and we can book you in for? <laughs> well, you know, it was just one of those, yeah, of a different time, right? I used to write some of your stories and post them on my wall at work because there was the one player who like kind of had someone held hostage, and you read up the story. Oh, I don't. And you I, found I, I'll them. tell that I've told it. And, Sadiq Shabazz. <laughs> oh my God! And then you calling him, asking him about it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Evan will go. Oh God! The, really, another old story. But it, you, you would get a used to have. So players would get signed, and again, it, there was not the rush to get it out like immediately. So and so has agreed to a two year deal, and we're excited and then posting and all of that it didn't occur that way. So sometimes a contract would get, you know, signed. And you wouldn't get the paperwork for two or three weeks. Like mm-hmm. the coach would wander down or GM and say, hey, Jamo, we got, you know, and I get these. And we had a player information form that what we would do, and it, God, it's so it's so quaint now, is, you know, we, and we would use this information to fill out their media guide profile. And some of it was like favorite movie. Yeah. Dog, pet's name. all <laughs> You know, all of that stuff that maybe a TSN a broadcaster might find they could work yeah. into a story or whatever. So we had this form. And I get this thing back. It's we've signed Sadiq Shabazz. So I again, you know, uh, early days of the internet, I've got there's some stuff and I can tell college and he'd been with the Raiders and they're, you know, I'm, well, I'm going to call him, just check in. So I, you know, hi, I'm Dave Jamison with the Edmonton Eskimos. I'm the PR guy and I'm just phoning. We're just going to announce your stuff and I just want to check it. <clears throat> the story came up. And it, it, I, I, city, I'm sorry, like, I don't know how to phrase this, but I'm going to get right to it is there's something about a hostage taking <laughs> and a confinement. And I'm just, I, I, I have to ask just in case, you know, some, a reporter is going to ask about it. He goes, ah, that was just a misunderstanding. <laughs> And I, I thought to myself, well, isn't that really the essence of what a hostage taking? Like, I want to leave and you want me to stay. We have a misunderstanding. <laughs> yes. He boiled it right down. Yeah. It, it, and so it was just like, and but the way it was dealt, it was just like, ah, you know, kind of like, ah, come on. It was a parking ticket. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Well, we'll just roll with it. Yeah, Did it's a it misunderstanding. I know, and, and, and it was just again, but I got a different a, time. A, a different time. It was just like, well, you know, it was a misunderstanding. We, misunderstanding. We all just agreed. It was. How, how many guys did you have to take to court? Uh, 
two. Yeah. I was well. Take was Alfred Payton, right? Company like to all of his lawyer company, appointments I, yeah, and drive right. him there yeah. and walk him yes. into the courthouse yes. and all of that stuff and sit with him in court. And then I was there for Adam Braidwood for an appearance, uh, right. but just because that was also a hostage thing. Uh, yes, yeah, that was, not good. <laughs> that that was, was just to, that car. was just to be present because yes. I wanted to know what was going on. Right. I didn't have an official like role with you. You weren't driving him to him from no, court. No, no, no. no. With, I just wanted to be Peyton. there and go. Okay, mm-hmm. let me understand what's happening here, and you know that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The Alfred Payton one is amazing, though. That yes. Story. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Uh, that, put it uh, in the book, Dave. Yes. Uh, yes. So now we should probably get to like. The full plans of what's happening with seventy five because this, mm-hmm. this is this isn't just the event on the sixth, this isn't just the logo, it's not just jerseys. What is fully happening this season for seventy five? I mean, I think in its simplest simplest form, it's uh, getting the alumni involved and embracing them and telling their stories. So it's a celebration of them. That that first week, there's going to be a whole bunch of events going on. Some are for just partners, some are for fans, some are for a variety of different audiences. Some are just for the alumni, frankly. I think what we're looking to do is to get them back and to give them an opportunity to uh, celebrate together and, and celebrate the club. So the dinner is the sixth. That's a huge event. Dusty's I'm saying, right? Yeah, that, that's, that, that's right. He will be emceeing the event. Nice. So, Good touch. Uh, that's great. He can leave, leave his triangle at home for that event. <laughs> and you don't uh, want the whole event? Back. You don't want the whole A&W song? That would be, I mean, sure, if they would like to, if they'd like to come on board, <laughs> yeah. uh, we're, we're accepting uh, applications. Buddy burgers for everyone. That would be, that would be outstanding, yeah. the appetizers. Yeah. Um, so the dinner is the 6th. That's a big event at the convention center. Um, the 7th, we'll have the unveiling of the Legends Club, which is us rebranding quarterback club in the uh, East Pod there. We were walking around yesterday, yep. plotting it out, uh, thinking about how we can enhance that space. So we've got a pretty bare canvas to work with there. There'll be an alumni reception, a luncheon of sorts uh, on the Friday for them. And then obviously the autograph signing we have on the Saturday before the home opener, which is exciting. That's that's really, I think, the opportunity for fans to get the most up close and personal with those guys who are coming back to town and get those autographs. And uh, it's just and one of the cool. biggest autograph signings you guys have Biggest done alumni autograph <laughs> signing totally. we've will have ever done and probably will ever do for an extended period of time yeah. until we have another big anniversary. Um so that's big. And then the halftime celebration on the Saturday as well for the home opener against nice. Saskatchewan. We'll carry it through with all decade teams. And one of the things that we want to highlight this season is guys who came here and ended up staying and being part of the fabric of Edmonton. So there'll be a video series that rolls out um, in game, a, a small portion of it, like mm-hmm. a bite sized version. And then we'll have a longer form one on YouTube. And it's cool. Um, We've got cheer team golf tournaments. There's there's alumni events that you guys We've are working on. We've got a wine on. fest on June 1st yeah, nice. in, uh, in soon to be known as Legends. Uh, and we'll have tickets That's always for, a great yeah, tickets for sale up times. very soon <clears throat> in the coming days here on Eventbrite uh, under EE Alumni Wine Fest. And that's something we've been doing for many, many years. And the funds raised through that go to our player support fund. Uh, we help players former players in need um and so uh, we'll yeah that'll be june 1st at, at commonwealth so we're excited about that mookie's president yes right? he is yeah are you yep. still you're st- i'm a i'm a director you yeah. are okay. and uh we've got what's really exciting is we've got a number of what i call younger players recent grads if you will from the eskimos and elks who are going to be uh coming onto our board and nice. have expressed interest and and that's really you know any organization refreshes Mm-hmm. And to have the younger voices on, and to have them really kind of you know take leadership, and is is going to be really really cool to see. That sounds like a Ryan King thing. Is he kicking? Well, around? and and Matt O'Donnell oh, and Justin Sorensen yeah. and Grant oh, Shaw, O'Donnell. and and I'm Sorensen's sure around, yeah. and I'm sure you know Kinger's around, and and uh, you know Cal McCarty is going to work for the Hamilton Tie Cats, yeah. but you know he'll make his him. home here. Um, there are more guys. I'm surprised, like. Uh, was it last year? I ran into Tristan Jackson on the concourse. No way. I'm what? Like, TJ, and he lives here. No way. Yeah. Trismo? Yeah. 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 Uh, that and surprised me too. I'm yeah. Like, I just, I, 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 really? I, you know, met somebody, you know, Almondo Sewell makes his home here. Yeah. That's one where I don't want to go and open up things again in the past. But when COVID was happening and mm-hmm. there was the talk of should the CFL get fed money, mm-hmm. and people going, well, these are going to Americans and stuff. But it was one I was like, but the lot do stay around. Sure. Right. Like that's yeah. the, they, they may be quote unquote Americans and stuff, but there's something about the CFL that, that a lot of people come up here and they just stick around. They just love it. 
Yeah, they love the community. They're embraced. They have they've enjoyed themselves both you know personally and professionally, and they've had a good experience. And yeah, I mean wow. they, they they have a home, you know, places where they're from. But that doesn't mean you can't find a place where you can be you know of in the present. Well, and, you're mm-hmm. Edmontonian though, right? Yeah. Wow, that surprised me, Tristan <clears throat> Jackson. Damn. Um, yeah. The Legends Club. I know you and I were texting back and forth. We were talking about some things yesterday, but uh, I tweeted. It, like modest upgrades that's the term i use because i was running out of characters to the stadium but, but that is kind of is that a fair way to describe it and there's something you guys are doing the jackie parker room giving it some yeah love as we're, well. we're just touching the jackie parker room up a little bit because it's it needs a little bit of a refresh and not yeah. we're, we're certainly not going to take you know jackie's presence out of there in fact we're going to hopefully enhance it with some yes. new imagery yeah. um and, and make it pop a little bit more and <laughs> There'll be some audio visual upgrades in that space that the city's working on, new projectors, new screens, nice. which is great because that's they needed how, it. Yeah, that's, that room needs it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the Legends Club, I would say, is more of a wholesale upgrade. So the floor has been redone, all the old vinyl wraps are off. Um, there'll be new installations in there. Um, I wouldn't say we're taking it right down to the studs, but we're certainly mm-hmm. going to put some some effort into that space. And then there's other things going on around the stadium as well in terms of some behind-the-scenes um, things. Um, totally new video production room. So all the equipment in there is new, mm, uh, nice. which is going to be great from us from a, a game presentation standpoint yep. to bring it up to, frankly, Rogers Place standards in terms of the equipment we're working with. Washrooms are being redone, new nice. floors, you know, painting the dividers, refreshing that space, some behind the scenes concession work to allow them to have more flexibility in the type of food they're serving. So have you had a Joaquin Gage yeah. burger? Well, no, I have not. Have you guys consulted with Joaquin about the Please. changes needed for the you concession? Must. Has he been an advisor on this? He is the or do we have to supreme. get you in touch? Because if there's anyone I want to decide to fi- how to fix the behind sure. the scenes of concession, it's, it's the slinger of wieners, and that's Joaquin Gage. Yeah, okay, yeah, we can get the slinger of wieners on a committee of some sort because we love I want, I want, I want yeah, him to be happy. I want him to be happy. So I'm going to defend and bring up Gage here and be like, we need to get him in touch. This is worlds colliding, yeah. and I love That's it. That's fair. Yeah. Um, as long as he doesn't wear that judge's wig that I've seen a few times. No problem. And I think he's going to put a hairnet on it. Yeah. I think that, he's doing that's every not game up to sure. code. He's doing every game? I think he's supposed to do every game this he, year. Yeah. Although he's getting, there's a fight between, I don't know, he mentioned this last week on the morning show. Um, I guess one of the other families with his daughter's dance said to like, if Gager's family is working, they don't want to work oh with Gager's God. family. Oh, that's I don't know fair. why people hate Gager. I've never, I, like, he's a goalie. That's one strike yeah, against him. Right. The dance community, and I know a little bit it's about vicious. it, having been in yeah. it. Uh, yes, it's it can be uh, it can be rugged. Yes, wow. it is dance. It is beautiful, but the you know, like anything, there's a, there's a you know a darker side, an undercurrent. <laughs> there's an undercurrent. Yes, don't Gage, mess with the dance. Gage has been brought into it. Wow. Yes. Yes. Uh, how? What's the reception been like to the new tailgating area? Very positive. Yeah, so we're moving it from lot A, which was the northwest corner, to lot B, which is the southwest corner, and it's going to be the epicenter of pregame. So Mm -hmm. it's expanded. There's 20 more stalls. We'll have a a larger stage in there throughout the season. It's sort of, you know, SL whatever, 1000 or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. It, It made a couple appearances last year, but that'll be a mainstay. Um, we're bringing a lot of activations around that space as well. So the thing that, you know, we've talked about a lot this off season is it doesn't have to have a million bells and whistles. It just has to be consistent, well-conceived and talk to the right people. So something as simple for us as why don't we throw some picnic tables down so people can sit, right? Like little things like that. Should we have some footballs and cornhole and frisbees to check out so people can have some fun on the grassy areas? Yeah, let's do that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the kid zone was one thing for me and and Karen Kondoski, who's our senior manager of game presentation. We've got young kids and we just sat there and we're like, you know, what, you know, I'll use Theo. Theo's my son. He's five years old. And he has moments where he's absolutely insane, just like any other five-year-old. Yeah. So I want to take him somewhere where he can go bounce in a bouncy castle until the end of the second quarter so that we can go back and watch the game. So expanding that kid's zone to be to the end of halftime as opposed to just being pregame because when do you really need an outlet? Well, you you don't necessarily need it pregame. You need it in the middle of the first quarter mm-hmm. when he's having a, a small meltdown because he didn't get a second cotton candy, right? So <laughs> right. let's go bounce that off and then we'll go watch the rest of the game. So we've just tried to look at it through that lens of, okay, our demographic is uh, obviously sports fans, event goers, but we want to make it a place where families can 
can enjoy and can be part of the experience. So our schedule is very conducive to that, and we're trying to make uh, as best we can with the facility um, make the space conducive to that as well. I'm selfishly looking forward to being at the tailgate and not being almost run over by a season ticket that holder too, from yeah. 1949 because they got there late. Get out of my way. They're not there late. That's when they planned to get there. Oh, my goodness. That's, that's, true. that's, that's Twice what they it got. happened. There's, there's like a like couple hundred people. Yes. Uh, the band's playing. Jerry's slinging sure. sluice juice. And then there's this... Uh, Water. Yeah, water, water, pardon me, pardon me. <clears throat> and then there's somebody in there. Oh, yeah. Get out of the way. Don't you know where my parking spot is? It's like, oh, boy. And that was the feedback. So we we went through the process of sort of envisioning it as a staff, and then we rolled it out to the seasoned seat holders who were tailgate spot holders. And we were a little bit nervous because we were like, we're going to block off. You won't be able to come through lot A. We're going to close the lot one hour before the game because we don't want anybody driving around. And we're like, oh, these people going to be mad. That can't be there 50 minutes before. They're like, they were like, this is awesome. We don't want people driving around. We want people there to have a good time. We want people there to get early. So that was the feedback from the customers. Mm. So it really will be a space for everybody to enjoy without the fear of getting run over. Excellent. Which is so always important. good. It's That's always important good. thing. It's the little yeah. things. Yeah. 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 Small little thing. <laughs> yeah. But Tail- it's, it's, a t- nice, it's a nice like, little luxury. I like safety. Tailgating is, <clears throat> the, it, in, in my opinion, the, 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 the best thing that has happened at that stadium and around the, the game day experience in, in my time. And yeah. I remember having going to meetings, Parkdale, Cromdale, and representing the club and listening to the community. And it was prior to the parking ban being put in place. Okay, So we're going back a number of years. Yeah, so we're talking that. late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. And I, I was there, and I was part, you know, taking the slings and arrows from the the, the community. And then they brought the, the ban in place, and, and there aren't many parking stalls at Commonwealth. I mean, no. for a building of 56,000 and change, there are, there's certainly less than 1,000 spots. Yeah, it's it's not very much. Like, Lot B is 200. Right. Um, which is not very much. No, it's not. I mean, so one really, of three lots really we use. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, last year I know there was a lot of work being done in the neighborhood, you know, yes. just even driving to Commonwealth. And if you had to come down a side street because yeah. of all of the sidewalks and everything, all of that is done nice. now. So it's going to be cleaner around Commonwealth, you know, and obviously the work done at the LRT station is done and that looks great. And I got to go to games last year for the first time in a number of years yes. on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. And I took the LRT there with Mooner. It was amazing. Like yeah. getting on the train even after the game right. was because I remember the old oh, yeah. that they had oh, there and it was long lineups down, and, back and the up. key was like you stick There's on the outside and you could find a way around. No. But it was long and they have it. It's so s- seamless now. It's yes. great. Like honestly, if you're right. looking to get to the Elks games this year and you can get to the LRT, use that because it's it's really well done. And the Valley Line now all the way to Mill Woods, that's awesome. You transfer yep. at yeah. Churchill or a couple other places. Yep. And yeah, I mean, uh, this is a total aside, but a couple of times uh, this year when it when it dumped snow, uh, I took the LRT, I took transit to get to the stadium. It's a very pleasant experience on the Valley Line and then jumping on Churchill as one stop. So it's, it's actually quite seamless. And yeah, we encourage people well, to take that, obviously. Yeah, I'll also take it to say, I know some will be like, oh, safety, all that. At that time game for an Elks game, yeah. game day, there's a lot of people yeah. on that train mm-hmm. coming on, yes. going to and from that. If, if there is a moment where it's actually going to be extremely safe, yeah. you're yes. in a good spot. I would have no concerns. Okay, so because no. there's a lot of people now that are taking that and, and there's a lot of extra security. So it's, yeah. it's, it's great. I love it. I've been on the subway system in New York, which is obviously heavily used uh, on my way to a Yankees game. It's the same thing. It's that pack. Everybody's wearing mm-hmm. green and gold. Some sprinkling of other teams. What fans. are they wearing in New York for a Yankees game? Uh, the pinstripe Blue Jays jerseys mostly. Weird. Uh, <laughs> and then like I've done Boston as well. Same thing. Like it can get sketchy in in the mm-hmm. in the late hours and wee hours of the day, the obscure hours. But uh, on the way to games, for the most part, it's really, really, really safe. Yeah. Um, as oh, an quick, aside, sorry, quick box yeah. banners. LRT free. Like it's, comes, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Right. Yep. it's with yep. your ticket of Correct. the game for those that didn't know. Yep. Also, if you are a dork like my brother and I, uh, and you're leaving downtown and you think the LRT, you want to try something a little different, it's nice out, we take scooters to the game. And we could park. Shared scooter, too. 
Oh yeah. Oh my. That was, not, a, that was not smart. The two of them were not smart. We no, can't. We can't condone that. Do not. No, condone. I know, no. But they just put and, picture that. And then I, I, I always, on I one always park together. at Santa Maria Goretti, like on the front steps, and of I'm like, course. it's okay. My grandpa built this place. <laughs> he literally was built it in the. I'm 50s. sure they appreciate having that scooter. Yeah, they're like gazolas. <laughs> anyway, the scooter ride is fun if you're looking for an alternative method to get to the stadium. Bike valet at Clark Stadium as well. That's Secure, right. fenced up. So if you're a bike nerd like I can be some days, ride your bike to the stadium and yep. it's in a good spot. I've seen you ride and, and leave uh, Riverhawks games on your bike. Yes. I love riding around the River Valley. <laughs> it's a great time. So, <laughs> yeah, But there's a lot happening at Commonwealth, yeah. you yeah. know, and, the, and moving to the lower, uh, lower deck, if you will, or closing the upper, depending on how you want to phrase it. I mean, it's going to create a really... You know, I intimate atmosphere. Uh, you know. We had uh, the other strength, Elks herd. strength in numbers. We had Scout from the Elks herd on just after free agency, yeah. and he just throw that like he just throw the numbers saying like ah the Elks could, I think will average like twenty six twenty seven thousand fans this year. And immediately my mind went, geez, like that's thirty one thousand I think is lower bowl. Yep. Yeah. That what type of atmosphere is that? That's going to be an amazing atmosphere. A good one. Because everyone's now just going to be tight in one spot. Mm-hmm. If you have in twenty six twenty seven thousand. That actually is going to be absolutely incredible. Sorry, Tommy, that you're you're going to be a little more crowded around. Yeah, you. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to deal with more cowbells. But it's it's going to be amazing to see. Um, we haven't had you on, I think, since well, we had you on a little around that news. How has it been, though, as we're getting close to the season? The fact that it is just lower bowl. Yeah, I think it's been relatively well received. Yeah. You know, the casual ticket buyers, and I would say this, our our younger season seat holders are excited about it. Um, there were some people in the upper bowl who said, I've been sitting here for 35 years. I yeah. don't want to move. It's the best place to watch a football game. I don't disagree with it being an awesome place to watch a football yeah. game. But at the end of the day, um, my perspective is uh, I'm going to a sporting event to be part of something and to be sitting up in the upper bowl and be secluded to a large degree and have a coach's view of the game is not necessarily sort of the atmosphere that we're, we're looking to create. Mm-hmm. Now I'm sympathetic to, to people being comfortable in their space and I understand that, but I think as people have sort of come to grips with it and warmed up to it, they understand the vision, which is you go to a football game for it to be loud, for it to be fun, for there to be energy. If you, if you don't want to be part of that, and not everybody's an event goer, we want you know, to be a welcoming place for everyone, but not everybody wants to go to an event with 30,000 people, just yeah. like not everybody wants to go to a Luke Combs concert with 55,000. That's just too much for them. So, um, yeah, the atmosphere has been well received and I think people, people get it. They get the vision. I've, so you get these little communities when you're a seasoned seat holder, you get to know everybody around you. Glenn and Kelly, uh, have been sitting behind me since I, I moved a couple rows back into an aisle seat about 10, 15 years ago. And, um, they were saying when the announcement was made, I think it was the last or second last home game of the year, they're yeah. like, ah, it's too bad they're closing this down. And we have friends that have seats up there forever. And I was like, I get it. Like you said, you're sympathetic to it. Mm-hmm. But I remember, and, I, and these numbers are, if I can't remember them specifically, but I said to them because I was reading through everything and I said, you know, they're only down to like just over 3,000 people that actually have tickets up there. It's like 1,700 accounts. Oh, right, yeah. Like, it yep. had dwindled to the point where it's like, mm-hmm. no, it doesn't make sense. It's not it, You can't it, make a business case for it. Exactly. And when it's, I said that to, to them, a few of the other people that were have been sitting around there for years were like, okay, well, it, that bad, huh? Yes, that's, that's why. And that's why this makes sense. And, and they're longtime season seat holders. And they're like, okay, but obviously they're in mm-hmm. our section. But... It was interesting when you explain that to them, how it kind of opens up uh, their minds to the reasoning and the rationale, as opposed to just the Elks going, no, we're not doing that. Yeah. I'll, I'll give credit to Rick, you know, Rick Lawless, our president and CEO. Uh, the idea had been floated for years, frankly. Yes. Back when yeah. you were still with the team. But yeah, well, and, you've talked and, about and, that before. And and let, been you know, let the record show that we closed <clears throat> off corners at the upper yeah, deck. We that. tarped them. Yep. Then that that is both an expensive proposition with the cost of tarps. It's also there is danger involved because if a wind gets under them, those Ooh. tarps go. They are yeah, they'll, they're, they're really really difficult a, to contain. You end up in our draws. Really, <laughs> and they, yeah, and they can they can badly injure someone or worse. Yeah. Um, so that wasn't that was done, um, and you know I know attempts were made. I mean, you know, let's not forget that like when I got there in '98, they were starting to put tarp off. Well, they were tarping off the end zone mm-hmm. underneath the score clock, 
and it's taking all those seats out of the inventory. So there have been things over the years. It's not like this is the this is unprecedented, but there have been steps taken before to try yeah. and make Commonwealth more intimate. It's a hard thing to do, you know. I mean, we would have games where you had 37, 38, 40,000, whatever, which, you know, happened fairly frequently. You had the one-offs, a couple of 60,000-plus yeah. games, but those are anomalies. And you'd look and you go, this is a good crowd, and then you had to remind yourself, but there are still 20,000 empty seats. Yep. You know, which is kind of where you live when you live on the business side, mm-hmm. which is where Evan and, and the team do. And then finish just the Rick Lawlisher, just to credit him. Well, just credit to him. I mean, he yeah. came in and said, we're closing up a bowl. What do you guys think? And I think everybody looked around the table and said, yeah, it makes sense. So it was just, you know, here's the vision. We're going to do it. Let's do it. And we'll deal, you know, we'll do it in the in the best way possible, mm-hmm. but we'll deal with the repercussions as they come. Yep. There's going to be people pissed yep. off. Of course. Always going to happen I whenever there's always. any sorts of decisions. But Just like there's some crazy people out there who don't love the logo. Like there's a few people. I still out don't there. believe in that. I still don't buy it. I don't trust. They're bots. I'm just believing those okay. as extra. There were a lot of numbers. Bots. Absolutely. A lot of numbers behind their name. Yeah. I'm suspicious. Probably an yeah. account started in, you know, September Calgary. 2023. Probably an account started from in Calgary. Calgary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't trust them at all. Uh, Dave Jamison, Evan Dom, Matawanak, Tom Zola here on the EST Hango. We're minutes away from the keyword for the EST flyaway to Las Vegas. Um, but is there anything we've missed from 75 celebration of this year? that you guys want to throw out there? Or? Um, the only thing I want to throw out is a kudos and a shout out to JMO, who's been awesome yeah. to deal with. A huge bridge for us between the club and the Alumni Association, which is, again, really the essence of this year. So it's been awesome working with JMO. Um, his number pops up uh, probably more on my phone than anybody <laughs> else should. right now, which that is good. Should. There are certainly other people I wouldn't want that to happen from, but he's, he's one that that's good. So... It's been fun working with him, and our committee has worked really hard on the plans behind it. Uh, so just, I'm just really, I'm, I'm genuinely, I, I think I have more energy now on whatever the date is today. What's the 27th? Yeah. March 27th than I did, you know, March 27th last year with the excitement of 75 coming. Yeah. It's, uh, I said to Evan when we, you know, we first agreed that I was going to work and work with him and help out, um, this, the dinner... And really that weekend, if you will, you know, the 6th, 7th, and then the the opener, it's an 11th home game. Mm. You've added another, in, in terms of the size of the event, like a dinner for a 1,000 people is a major, major event. Yeah. With a tremendous amount of pre-planning, tremendous amount of, you know, all of the, the pieces and all of you have here on this, and I'm sure many of your viewers, you know, that you have some sense of how those things, they don't just come together and you say, what are we going with chicken or beef? To, <laughs> chicken or we beef We do have tonight. to decide that though. Yes, but <laughs> so there's that. And also with all of this work on this large project and it's season long, oh yeah, you've still got to get ready to have events. You've got 10 coming up, Right. The opener, followed by the next game, followed by the next game. Like I always used to say, this is like being in the circus. And there's also a football team that has to play yeah, football games. Oh, yeah, those games. Right. Like, that, that hasn't even been discussed. Like, right. there's, there's the fact that we still have the football to be played. Right. That is a big part of it, yes. Yeah. You it's, know, it's kind of important and, and, and doing And doing this kind of event, the, these events, plural, I should say, prior to the start of a season is unlike anything they've done because... You know, the dinner would slide in during a bye week or or a time that was a little quiet. Okay. And you'd put the bulk of your season behind you. Well, this is, you're going in with a full tank of energy, but you've, Evan and his group, they've got to manage their energy for an entire season to follow. And you're in training camp. Right. Well, there's camp and there's, you know, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's a big undertaking. Is there a fan day this year? Is that, Fan is May that, 18th at Clark yeah. Stadium. Okay. So perfect. that'll be the green and gold scrimmage day. And, uh, yeah, we'll have, uh, I mean, Edmonton Sports Talk should be on location for that. So it's a long weekend, but yep. we'll see you guys uh, there. TSN 1260 was on location at Fan Day last yes. year. Yes. And then we were shut down a, less than a week later. I even recall. <laughs> yes. <it laughs> That's was right. Because yeah. was that one, I did one green and gold. <laughs> that was terrible radio. We're, we're cutting the station. Uh, yeah. were there. Right. We I, did I, the, I forgot the time. You came down. Oh we yes, had a we great did time. We did a couple Program was excellent in getting us people. Mm-hmm. You guys were lovely hosts to us. We got it done. And then the next day was the home opener. And yeah. I did my first pre and post of the year. And then on Wednesday, we got let go. Yeah. And I didn't I remember, get to do a second one. I remember meeting Dean Faithful, and we had yes. an on air with him. And I thought, after A, he's entirely charming. And is he not in Ted Lasso? 
<laughs> like I thought, this guy is a character out of Ted Lasso. Yeah. You know? But Fan Day was great. Oh, it was terrific. It was, awesome. it was, it was the I, best one I'd seen. Yeah. Honestly. That's because I wasn't there. Because I wasn't there last year. You weren't Where there? Were you? I was they didn't in notice. bed, oh, curled that's right. up in the fetal oh, position. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, your yeah, hope yeah. is to get ready for the home opener. Some plague okay. from daycare came and punched me right in the yeah. face. Yikes. But it was a tremendous nice work, Hernan. It Hernan was, Salas, it was all Hernan. Yeah, it was a tremendous fan day. The commissioner was there, yeah. and it just didn't nice. look big. And I mean, I go back to when we'd have fan day. In fact, we started fan day when the team used to train at Concordia. Oh, yeah. And it was, you talk about humble, you know. Okay, we've got a couple of boxes of chips here. Hand them out <laughs> to the kids. People sitting on the grassy knoll at Concordia in lawn chairs watching us do two a days. Right. And that was about it. You know, a couple of people had Sharpies to circulate, get some <laughs> autograph kids, and then it grew and grew and grew, yeah. right? So, and to see it, what it is now, that's, that's so how you 18th. do it up. Yeah. May 18th, Clark Stadium. Yeah. Free, I, free of charge. A couple things. Really yeah, quickly. go for it. Uh, mm -hmm. I love that week. That reminds me of a quick JMO story. It was our last day when things were getting a little crazy before we got the, you guys are done. Yes. Uh, I remember I, it was the, the, the commercial break before they formally shut us down. And uh, Jeff Walker was in the talent tank getting ready for that day's shows. And Jamo, you walked in, <laughs> and I'm filling up my Walker bottle. And you, were, you and Maddie were supposed to be, I think, at Riverhawks we're, that day. Yeah, the him Tide and I were going to be at Riverhawks yeah, for the and show. Tide. That day. And uh, Jeff, who's always very enthusiastic and positive, was like, Jamo, it's going to be great when you guys are down at Riverhawks. And then you're like, we'll see. And you walked <laughs> out. <laughs> I started laughing. And then at the same time, I was like, uh oh, that's not good. And sure enough, uh, Twenty minutes later, minutes we're, minutes we're later we were. We yes, we went to a, the the ultimate hard network oh. out. <laughs> I always wanted one of those days. Yeah, yeah. And you got I it. I always fought day. for one of those. Oh, I day. finally got it. Yes, yeah. People, you know, it's funny, I and mean, I know we want to get to some other stuff, but we're like, man, it just ended, and you go, yeah, that's how these things go. Yeah. Down. Yeah. Harsh, man. That's and how these things go down. I tell people what, when I tell the story, I was like that morning, half an hour prior to the hard out. I got an email from my lawyer saying, congratulations, the the purchase oh, of your yes. home went through. And I heard I was about like, that. Oh, my God. Right. Perfect. What a day. Yes. That was that was a day. Uh, okay, I want to get to this text. I know we're going to get to keyword. It's from Skaggs. It mm -hmm. says, for Dave, Skaggs yeah. here. Great to hear you back on the airwaves, my friend. Ah, I have three of my first four games at home here in Edmonton. Really looking forward to the celebration. Hope to see you there, 46. Ah, yes. One of the one of the real good people in our football community. Just a, a great guy to deal with, and we've we've seen some stuff over the years. <laughs> yes. Ready for the keyword? Let's do oh, it. drum roll! Or ESD or flyaway <laughs> keyword time. Get your phone ready. Get set to text seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine and ninety nine. The Parish Jewelers inbox. Dave's got his phone. Oh, he's yep. he's getting ready to text the word. Now. His number's blocked. <laughs> uh, don't go in the nasty chat. You got to text the keyword to seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. Uh, just quickly make sure I got the keyword ready to go there. Uh, two nonstop flights, three nights accommodations, tickets to Cirque presented by Fly YEG, the Edmonton International Airport, who have nonstop flights to over fifty destinations. Where your sports trip starts with nonstop flights from Fly YEG. Visit flyyeg.com for more information, as well as our partners in Las Vegas, the LVCVA. The keyword for today. Enjoy this one. Craps. Craps, as in craps tables. Craps table. Okay. C-R-A-P-S. Craps. I see the connection. There it is. Crappy keyword. Connection. It is, yeah. Hey. Yeah. Today, when I started reading that one to put it on the screen, I was like, yeah, that's that's a little poor, having to say that one out loud. But craps. Craps. Say it slowly. To 780-218-9999. You can put, like... C-R-A-P-S. Fountain. Craps. I think Pelagio. I, I do have, they, those, have, those are keywords. He picked that one for us, JMO. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, craps. Okay. 780 okay. You will go into a draw. Either Zach Tim or YouTube Trev will give you a call in the next five minutes or so. We'll speak to our qualifier on the air. So keep your phone on. If you're texting us, get ready to answer your phone in the next five minutes so we can talk to you. It was always weird when somebody doesn't answer right after they text. Yeah. Um, so keep the phone on. Craps, 780-289-9999. That's your keyword for the hangout today for the EST of Fly Away. Uh, we're qualifying people until April 25th. April 26th on the morning show, we'll do the grand prize draw, giving away this trip for two to Las Vegas. Well done. Uh, we had a text for JMO. We've got one specifically for mm. Dahmer. It's from Brian Fromage. You might know him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, May I? Senior Queso. Yeah, yeah, Senior Queso. 
I know there's probably a few theme nights this season, but the big question is, will there be a karaoke night hosted by Dahmer? That would be amazing. I pitched karaoke as a theme for one of our games. And uh, we were thinking about the logistics. And uh, unfortunately, karaoke is only sung appropriately in one locale in this city. And uh, they were unable to... uh, to pick Fulfilled up shop and yeah, come, yeah, you come were, to Commonwealth. You were so. heartbroken on Saturday. Saturday was a tough one, yeah. It yeah, was yeah. an emotional roller coaster for me. When you have yeah. the voice of Jesus and Fergie combined, <laughs> like Evan Dom, you want to sing. You want everybody no, to know it's your like talent. Dusty is Fergie and I'm... No, he's he's Jesus and I'm oh, Fergie. Okay. Yeah, it was the they two of us crushed. together. I, know. I was bringing Luciano to them. To, to yeah. drop one. I was going to drive home and also we just like we're walking towards Rosie's and also we see them and they just yell it's closed <laughs> yeah. it's closed and like is it for good or renovations, no, renovations. And they were, they were open. stunned oh, they were very hallelujah. disappointed right down to the studs it, in there and they're oh. taking away all the uh, maybe they won't maybe they'll just do the same look but you know new so probably not you took us there a couple bad. months ago it has character yeah, it's sticky. The floor's it, sticky. Well, I didn't uh, that's say, what you know. we call character. I'm yeah. intrigued by this renovation. Yeah, because, they better uh, not take the claw machine out. The Hilltop Pub oh, the had, uh, had an issue. They had a flooding and a fire and stuff, and they did renovations. Yes. And we went back to the top. We're going, like, what type of renovations did they do? They had flooding and all that. Uh, it looked the exact same. <laughs> that's same what you chairs, want. same tables. <laughs> the floor was want. different because they had to replace the floor. And I think there was, I think the lights fixtures changed. Oh, and, yeah, that was and the Gretzky painting was still stays. there. Oh, yeah. I yes. still was there. It didn't move. And we went in because we're like, and we actually had to ask the waitress, like, what did you guys renovate here? Like, what yeah. is different? Because we couldn't notice what changed. And like, oh, yeah, no, this, this, but the table's the exact same, the chair's the exact same. But then they had another uh, fire. Mm-hmm. Oh, did they? It's yes. back on the IR. Yes, yeah. so I don't know if they've reopened since, but. LTIR. Um, that was our favorite spot. Yes, it was. Yes, really that hosted it. a few gatherings for the... A few uh, unsanctioned Christmas parties. Yes. And we had a summer unsanctioned there. It was crazy. Yeah, we did. Yeah, it's right in my right in my hood. So I went there a few times in between uh, closures. Is it open again? Or is it <laughs> no, still closed? No, it's currently right closed. See, now, see, here's the problem I have, is that you just worry that they're not going to open. Well, you know what? If it comes up for sale, you guys should buy it. Well, we're buying it Shanks. Into, oh, you're buying Shanks? That, that's the big plan. Well, why don't you buy both? I guess why not? We could have the point. ESD different parts 2.0. of the city. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is World HQ. Yes. yes, that could be. I don't know a theme park. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that could well, be I'm, the theme park. Keep, of we ESD. We're keeping the names though. It'd be Shanks by EST, right? And it'll of be course. the Hilltop Pub by EST. Shanks and EST experience. Yes. Yeah. An interactive thing with holograms and yeah. stuff yes, like exactly. that. Yes. You know, There's you a video too could be part of the morning, the Nielsen show. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I yes. really like this idea. I really like this yeah. idea. And then do we have to buy Rosie's in the end? No, I, I think that that's a standalone it should brand. Be or if you do buy it, you should yes. re, you can't rebrand. No, like, no, like well, like don't if, make it like Dusty's or something. And then <laughs> no, like, no, the name has to yeah. still be there. Yeah. Like at most, it'd be Rosie's presented by EST type. An EST experience. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll buy that one too. Why not? We'll, 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 this is an empire for you guys. Yeah, yeah. We're like it's the thing is we're gonna build something really good here for a few years. I and don't then we're know, gonna guys, destroy it completely by buying these things. If yeah. your business model is sound, you can't just look <laughs> you at places funny? that you okay. can buy just so you can go drink at. Can I say something though? <laughs> yes. We've brought up Shanks to Murray from the ranch and the VIP golf show. And he, he said, thinks it's a brilliant business model. He's a businessman. He's oh, very, I know. I know he's he very much into like this should work. You guys need to do this. With the driving range. Of course. Inside. Golf sim. There was mini yeah. golf there, wasn't there? Mini yes. golf, bowling. Mm, and yes. sim. I want to add an F1 simulator in there. Naturally. We're going to have the cool bet sports betting spot. I like it. Murray said it. Like, I mean, that's, he's he's a businessman. Yeah, well, I know. And, and a very good one. And a very good one. I just, it's, yeah. I, I mean, if he's involved, then I'm, I'm but I'm, I'm not sure I trust you guys. But he's friendly, That's and he might have been humoring you. Yes. No, he texted me. He texted me and Dusty randomly one day and went, you guys really need to do this. Well, there you go. And so it was. So, so now if one day we have Shanks, and then eventually that leads I'll to the manage, Topper and I'll, Rosie's. I'll manage she'll top for you because I can walk there. Yes. I like this. It's an easy commute for this me. Is brilliant. We'll, we'll pay you just in a tab. That's fine. Okay. I'll only manage it six days a week then. Yes, That's he's cool. worked for less. <laughs> yeah, it is, it's it true. Is day. He's worked for less. Uh, Are we talking line combos today? That's for later. <laughs> How do you think the line should be for the others? Oh, oh, no, no. I just, yeah, that's no, just no. my... It's just... Yeah. Uh, 
They okay. won, guys. Just leave it at that. They won. I, I'll gladly leave it at that. Yeah. You know? I'm good with that. Do the Jays yeah. have a chance to make the playoffs this year? Of course they do. Okay. Of course they do. I mean, I, I think I think the team is um, – there's holes. There's holes yes. in the roster. There's no doubt about it. But they've, they've got enough firepower, I think, um, to be competitive and be in the race. I think they will – I think they'll fall short in September when the games get tougher, is my thought, as a pessimistic fan. I like that. It's, it's a good. hard open. Like, you know, they go Tampa, uh, they go Tampa, Houston, Yankees to Was open. Is it 10 in a row? there? For like two or something? I can't yeah, they're on the road a lot. They're on the road. and they're all, Well, because they finished the renovations for this yeah, year. Yeah, and then, it, you know, I mean, I know that's early and you got 182 games to figure it out. Um, but that said... Um, you know, it'll if if they do start slow and if they don't finish well, obviously the the questions are going to go. Well, Atkins and Shapiro didn't do enough, right. and did they address the concerns they had? And you know, what man, which version of Manoa are you getting? Well, are you getting any version, question. or are you getting any version that of Manoa? Is, right? That is scary. Yeah. Well, that's the real question. If if Manoa could be back to what he once that's was, that's a huge difference. Maker. Sure. Then that's you're having a different conversation. What, 15, but twenty games potentially difference. You could put like. Yeah, getting wins or something. Let's let's maybe go. It, it's a double. To di- it's a double digit swing. Yeah, you know. But you look at what Baltimore has built. You know, they are <laughs> Which young. Is they are talented. They are, you know, relatively speaking, inexpensive. I mean, that is, you know, if you're buying stock, right? You mm-hmm. want to invest in a team like that. Tampa's perennially strong, um, and you know the Yankees are the Yankees. So you know, but they have injury concerns. Start this oh yeah, year. straight off. Sure they do. Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole. Who yeah. knows what's going to happen with him? Aaron yeah. Judge had an MRI or whatever on his abdomen yeah. at some point during spring training. And they it's, and it's they were weird, riddled. Though. They were they got crushed yeah. by injuries last year. It's weird that you're looking at the AL East and right now we're looking at mm-hmm. the top two teams being the Orioles and the Rays. Though like wow, the Jays are looking at a year where it's not the Red Sox, the Yankees. It's just how good the other teams right. are. It's a great division. Oh uh, yes, we've got our qualifier for the EST flyaway on the line. Who do we have, Zach? Rip City Step. Oh Rip no City way. Step. I'm awesome. Thank you guys. No worries. Uh, I, you've been to Vegas before, haven't you? Uh, yep. You have? Only oh. once. Only yeah. once. How long ago? Oh, like 2012 probably. Okay, so it's still been a while. Now, if you, if you win this, what are you planning your trip around? Is it is it the Summer League or are you going for something else? It would probably be the Summer League or see if there's a concert down there sometime that my lovely wife would like to see. I love that. Well, congratulations, Rip City Step. You are in the draw. Keep your phone on April 26th because if you're the winner, the boys will give you a call let you know that you're off to Vegas. Thank you, guys. There is our next uh, latest qualifier for the EST Flyway. Next chance to qualify coming up during the lock shop with Dusty and Huss, and then another chance to qualify uh, in the noon hour as it's the oil stream. Tommy will be on with Dusty yep. um, with the fourth and final qualifier for today. Um, I have a baseball question. Go for it. It's for JMO. Uh, will you be making a pilgrimage to Oakland in the final season there? Uh, boy, and you know, it's, it's, I really wrestled with that and, and probably still wrestle with it because I would like my money not to go to John Fisher. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, honest, I, and you know, let me just, if I can put aside the fandom and my desire for the A's to stay in Oakland forever and ever, um, uh, that is not going to happen. But if you follow Last Dive Bar and the people are in that community who have been done so much work to agitate and protest and do all of the things they're doing. Yep. And the Oakland Ballers, a, a new team that's starting up there. Um, how that fan base has been treated by him specifically and Dave Cavill, the, uh, the team president, is really shameful. Like it is a case study in how to um, how to cannibalize a market. And, you know, the A's have always been a small market team. I mm-hmm. think their payroll this year is on par with what they had in 2007. Jeez. You know, so they are pov- like they're a poverty MLB team. And to by watch choice. what's happened there. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's you know, it's death by a thousand cuts. Yep. And they're the cuts that you've administered to your own body. Yep. And it's just painful to watch. You know, for those who go, wow, ah, well, if, if people cared so much, they'd fill the place. Oh, they care. And they've turned out over the years under some, you know, bad ownership, a lot of it Fisher, but, you know, some previous. And But that franchise 
defined some eras in baseball. Mm-hmm. Defined it. The 70s, you know, with the, the, the three in, their, in a row. And, you know, all of it from the look and the white shoes and the way they played and the, you know, and the Bash Brothers and all of that. Yep. Let's not forget. It's an important franchise to all of a sudden go. But mind you, they've had it with the Raiders. Yeah. They've moved twice. Um, the Warriors. And the I'll Warriors tell, I know now it's are across still the right there, right. but they left the city and they went to the other city. Right. And now I've never been to Oakland, but I've always been drawn to it because, you know, I foolishly fell in love with a very bad hockey team that played there in the Seals. Great jerseys. Yep. And, and, <laughs> and I think there's an attitude. And the people there... You know they they've been you know they're they're lesser than than San Francisco right yeah or in the in the public perception, and so there's a real that's why I want to go I want to go and experience what it's like to go to the town which is uh, what it's known right yeah. and and to kind of experience what that but I don't want to give my money to that organization you know that the Fisher ownership um, is so bad that even Vegas doesn't really want the team and doesn't really care for the own mark the mayor said stay yeah mark davis Mm -hmm. it publicly ridiculed fisher like and and like mark davis is no angel i was about to say isn't that the uh yeah yeah yeah, Yeah. that's pretty ironic and it's sad i remember when they were the uh the affiliate of the trappers and that was the 96 97 years giambi spezio chavez guys like that um they played here they played they here. Played. They played. They had an afternoon those... game at Telus. That's right. And yeah. uh, Tommy or uh, Tony Larusa was here. Mm-hmm. And, and there was McGuire. a game played. Who played in Commonwealth? Was that, that with was Angels? Yeah. Was that was with Reggie yeah. Jackson? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's sad to see what it's it deteriorated into. And and if you do make your way out to Oakland, you're going to get the the stadium experience from uh, it's tough. the it's... 70s and 80s because yeah. they haven't done anything really to renovate it. I had the good fortune of going to a bunch of games there, but. Yeah, it's it's rough. Like they're a, a franchise that's just been left to whittle away by choice. Yeah, no, it's painful to watch. Yeah, but stay in San Francisco. <laughs> Oakland's a rough town. Still how you do it? But I know you you like the authentic feel of well, something, so you'd go and stay in Oakland. You know, my thought yeah. is lots of people live there and go there, so you they, know, they I, I think I think I can I can survive. The, yeah, the, the football seats that they would bring in for the the Raiders when they were still there, they literally just leave them in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> they cart them in and all. I remember being on the the subway. I was like, "Are those the seats from the f- when they do football configuration?" Yeah. And sure enough, they're just sitting in the parking lot, lying around. Yeah, Oakland baby. PR hats on you guys. Communications okay. hats. Handling if you were the Dodgers and stuff, handling Shohei Otani and all this right now. What have you guys made of how they've? Well, it always depends on what the truth is, because you work That's back a... from the truth. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, the Dodgers, yeah. But are the Dodgers, would they be getting the truth? No, I don't think they would be, probably. I think this has now become bigger than the Dodgers. It has become a, like, it's it's not just a team issue. Yeah, I mean, they're impacted because it's noise around the biggest team, or second biggest, wherever you have the Dodgers and Yankees and Red Sox in your Right now, they're the biggest. As, yes. They, they okay. have the recent World Most Series win. They just right. brought in Otani in this big deal. They brought in Yamamoto, even though he got and rocked in that first game. Like, yeah. And you've, got the, biggest, the team, yeah. you've yeah. got the biggest name in baseball in the on the biggest team, in the biggest market, you can't craft a bigger PR disaster like for in the sporting world. For I mean, you know, there's there's some other stuff. Particularly for baseball, but in particular, like Rob for Manfred's baseball. probably having like massive headaches right, right now. Just like so what is I going on? I think if you're the Dodger PR staff, and Evan, you know, um, agree disagree here, is you're riding along with MLB, and you're not making a move without them knowing or perhaps directing you in terms of, you know, so it's full-on isolation for Otani. There's not any access at the cubicle, not that, I mean, because his situation and, well, and a translator well, and, and all one, that stuff. The, the one time he's addressed the media this week, it was, I think there was only two cameras in there, right. which was MLB and the Dodgers or whatever. Yes. Like, there was... Even the room, no one was basically allowed in. Right. And as for the teammates, um, they're essentially under a gag. Well, would be under a gag order. Thank God Trevor Bauer is not there. Jeez. Um, no, but, yeah. you, you know, you got to, like, you have to figure out, I've got a, a dike and there's water coming out. How do I fix all of these holes so mm. we don't have the whole thing crash in? And it might have already crashed in. I don't, you know, I don't know how you kind of get through this. 
There's really not much to do. I agree with you, JMO, from the Dodgers' perspective. You're taking all your cues from Major League Baseball yep. because it transcends the organization, the player. Mm -hmm. It's now a fundamentally, it's a baseball question. Yep. What is what is baseball going to do on the Shohei Otani situation? So you're you're very you're passive to a large degree because you have to be. It's it's there's not much else to do. Uh, you're having fireballs thrown at you though, and you're trying to dodge those. Oh, it sucks. I'm assuming. Yeah, it sucks. Oh God, but yeah. there's just still nothing to you, say. Right. There's just what do you say as an organization, uh, especially if you don't if you're not working back from what you believe to be the truth. And I'm not saying they are, or they aren't. But if you're Shohei Otani, there, there's no benefit to him being truthful. Really, is there? Because. It, he's in, he would be incriminating himself mm. if he is depending fact, what the truth is depending, depending on what, what the is. truth well, is yes. for sure I think that's yes. the thing like if he bets or if he's part of that then yeah there's no I find his version but, of events to be hard to believe but mm -hmm. that's not necessarily to say that they aren't yep. the truth you know we're dealing with it truly a lost in translation in some cases yes right? you know mm -hmm. which is a little ironic given that we're dealing with a translator is a big part of this story but no but there are and you know there um Again, we go to some cultural differences here. You know, how do those factor in in terms of the, the the interaction with the media and how you present yourself publicly and all of those things that this makes this unique, troubling on so many levels. And then, of course, it opens up the question. I mean, God, and then it's been percolating for as long as we open the gates to allow, you know, teams leaks to to get into bed. Yeah. With 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 gambling, wagering, and all of that. Well, I'd say gambling's always been around. Oh, of course it. That has. it's of not. It is, it that has. to me, that the relationships not as much. The fact that the leagues are taking this now, the money. Yes, that it that's makes it, it raises the eyebrows a little bit more, I guess, mm -hmm. for that. But oh, to, sure in does. the end, if Otani, let's say, bet on something, I'm just throwing that out there hypothetically, and it wasn't embraced by North American sports, he still would have been able to do it. Mm -hmm. You find there would have been ways to have got it done. Pete Rose, we we go back. Yeah. He, yeah. He did it those ways. Um, it is going to be it, almost impossible for, for, for professional athletes or college athletes based on the data that's available to leagues and how the data flows from, you know, for instance, Genius Sports, who's been talked about with the CFL and a partner of ours. They're providing information to betting books. They're providing those mm -hmm. stats. But information is coming back on betting patterns and those type of things. So the partnership allows for the leagues to be aware of some irregularities. Mm -hmm. This so it's is going to be way almost to, impossible. To regulate it. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be almost impossible yeah. for somebody to get, get away with it on any sort of scale. And that's a good thing. It's a very good well, thing. Well, the Porter situation with the Raptors, right. yeah. that may not have been figured out 15 years ago if I he was going through a different been. book. It would not have been. You know, right? Like we wouldn't have known. But now that the fact that I think every team has to have someone looking at the yeah. their yeah. specific teams for the regulations and, and mm -hmm. the lines and all that, the fact that someone was able to sit there and be like, whoa, these, this doesn't look right. Mm -hmm. These two games in January and March, he leaves, he gets the under, there's massive amounts of money put there. That's not right. That, that that's exactly. actually the way we might be looking at having to look at this and go, this is a good thing that they will follow the they will follow the data, they will follow the numbers, and that we'll will be able to catch more. Yes. Hmm. And that people may look at that and be like, Well, that's just because we're we're welcoming gambling more into the world. But it also might well, I, and I look at it maybe more that no no, but now we're actually just spotlight is no on of we've caught these people. It's an updated version if you will on the, and this is a dated reference but you older viewers will know from watergate follow the money and Bob that's Berger's what they're birthday doing yesterday, and, and that's what they're doing follow the money you know and that and and now there is there are precious few places to hide the otani one's gonna be fascinating for me it's just for sure it is well I, you can't even sweep this under the rug potentially because this may be a criminal thing when it comes to the translator yeah, Yeesh. which means there's full evidence that has to be presented, and there's full investigation into this, and we will then learn the truth, to a degree, mm -hmm. I guess, of how much is Otani involved in this. And if you're baseball, you can't then hide that, because this is now going to be criminal, right? Like it's in that level of thing. So, like, it, like it's wild to think that we may see that Otani could be like there's there's a a big range of things where he's completely innocent. Nothing's here. As he's, his story is completely truthful to this guy might get a lifetime ban from baseball. And Otani is incredibly important to the sport of baseball and to Major League Baseball as a financial entity, as a yeah. corporate yes. entity. Porter, with no disrespect to any professional athlete, is just a guy. 
he can be replaced and will be replaced if all of this pans out in a second and no one will know he was here. Mm-hmm. He'll become a footnote. But are those the ones that the leagues have to be most worried about? Yes. Of throwing games or all that, betting the under of their own props and doing that? Because, like, the Otani's a little surprising to me in, in a way, but, like, I'm not worried about a star quarterback throwing a football game because... No, because... Why? Why? Because they have their money. And why risk, about, why risk your career? I don't know. I, I, mean, why I don't know any gambling that, addicts, but I don't think it's about the money for the gambling addict. It's the thrill. It's the it's yeah. the high. Oof, it's the yeah. rush. Right? So I, I don't know if it matters if you're a low-end player at, at the that level, if you're the highest-end player. If you have a problem, mm-hmm. you have a problem. Like... I, if I'm Major League Baseball, I'm way more concerned about Shohei Otani being involved in gambling than some guy who's making his Major League debut, right? Like and working I'm, off the minimum, exactly. You know, Porter makes what because who's most 000. damaging to the to the operation, right? Well, like Shohei for sure. Yeah, yes. yeah. See, I, I just, maybe I'm a little too naive. I just don't think that star player wants to risk fully their betting on baseball, betting on their own games, and throwing a game. But no I, pun intended I, with that, where you know. they're messing with the integrity of the game because now they're risking, the, he would be risking a $700 million contract, whereas that guy who's only going to be in the league for two or three years, he's trying to get as much money as he can to, to be set for life. Well, I think, though, Evan gets to, certainly, and, and I don't wager, but I and I know people who have struggled with, with gambling um on some level um and i think we're probably it 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 will beg the question it already has as to you know addiction and Mm -hmm. and i i think evan's right you know that it it's a guy making what 700 whatever otani makes he's a human at the end of the day with all of the same foibles that the rest of us could have and he's not necessarily thinking you know i make $2 Two million dollars for every minute I'm, you know, breathing on the planet. Um, I really like the buzz I get off throwing down some money on the Blackhawks tonight. Yeah. Right, but but that's I'm talking about throwing of the games. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. Which is a different. That's sort of where level I'm going. Where like that, yeah. the betting on sport, like there's the two angles of this. There's the ones that just bet on sports, right? And then there's those that bet on the under under of their player prop, yes. and rig the inte- mess with the integrity of a game. And that's where I just and like baseball's already had that with the Black Sox scandal yes, yeah. and from you know bygone era. Um, you know, there's precedent within baseball, right? That was a hundred and what twelve years ago now. Oh, yeah. well, they made a movie about it, right? With Charlie Sheen. What was the was college like team? Or something like that. Twenty uh, college basketball team. Or something like was that. it ASU? Yeah, like was it Arizona State that was embroiled in that betting scandal? Oh, I, th- I th- think they like were it was one of the Iowa top- or something. No, I mean this is this would be what in the early two thousands or late nineties. Arizona. There was there a was, recent one that I'm thinking of in like the yeah, Iowa. Yeah. This past in college, this past season. But you have to worry about it at that level, of course. And now with NIL and and all of what that that ecosystem. Mm. So the Shohei thing is going to be buckle up because it's going to get interesting. Yeah. You almost from a club perspective a PR and again I, I you know you're. You've got to just put that thing over there. It is the very much the elephant in the room every single day. You go to the park and you, you know, but you have to compartmentalize as hard as that would be. You know, okay, Skip's ready. Let's have to bring the media in. We're talking about the Diamondbacks tonight. Okay, yeah. let's go. Yeah. I think the hard thing as a PR person or as a fan or a media member is, the hard thing to digest is that something that sometimes there's just nothing to say. Correct. We always want to. We want to say something. Yes. But sometimes there just really is nothing to say. Um, so, and that's the thing you have to be at peace with if you're in a position. You know, we'll often say. I know, and Evan and I, we've you know talked over the years. I mean, you often t- just go back to your statement. What was that foundational statement you made? It, it, it maybe it's at the beginning of whatever you you might be dealing with. If the situation hasn't changed, just go back to those that that what you said then does it still apply now? Any changes? Then say it again. Mm. That's what we can offer. You guys always want something new, but sometimes there's nothing new. Yeah, you're always there trying to get the scoop. I want to be on that side. You were on that side, and I know that's the job. Both were. Yes. Yes. Both. Oh no, absolutely. Because at some point there will be something to say, and if you ask all the time, eventually you will get something. Yes. I respect it, but 
Yeah. Uh, on a lighter note, Sheldon, not in a white garbage truck, texts mm-hmm. and says, "What's lost in all this is how much does the translator suck at be- at betting if he's down <laughs> four and a half mil." That, that's true. That's a lot of cash to eat up, <laughs> yeah. unless you put it all in one game. Touche. He thought the the generals were due. <laughs> oh boy. Uh. Oh. I, I st- we, we had we were uh, Reed Clark and Murray McCourt were in a couple yeah. weeks ago and it was one the, the, the Globe Trotters were just in town. Yes, and the Generals haven't won in like since like the seventies or something. People were talking about our losing streak. Let's talk <laughs> about those guys, right? That, at some Where point, you got the accountability. Exactly, the Generals, generals yeah. got to get a win here. We should have dropped that last year. Yeah, I'm we're disappointed not the generals. myself. No, like at some point though, like but you that's actually part but, of the shtick. Right? But that's, you have to mix in a general win every so often, like every like fifteen years, I would say, or something. So some kid who's been big and to go see the Harlem Globetrotters, they end up going to the one game that yeah, the Generals, the generals win, win. And he's crying at the end of the Doesn't game, matter. and the dad is sitting there and saying, "What are these guys doing to the rest of my no. day?" Yeah, yeah. you because witnessed that, history. But that's that's the short term thinking. The dad should be sitting there being like, yes, he's going to be miserable today. But 10 years from now, when he understands, he's going to love the fact that he was at that Generals game when yeah. they won. Do yeah. the Savannah Bananas ever lose? Or do they always win too? Or do they lose I have sometimes? No idea. I don't know. I, I kind of don't like that shtick. Like some of it's like the, the if in the, I think it's the last inning, ninth inning, if it's a foul ball. And the fan and catches, the fan it. catches yeah. it, it counts as out. That I think is clever. But the dancing thing is, I think it's stupid. I haven't I'm so really watched it. a lot of them. Uh, it's a, no, it's annoying. If Just it's, give me a general's it's, win. That's all it, I want. It, I will, I mean, full credit and for the marketing wizardry, it's uh, taking a, a bunch of pages from Bill Vec from the White Sox. Uh, and that's fine because nothing is truly new. It just gets refreshed mm-hmm. and rebooted and all of that. But it's got to be hard to keep the joke oh going. My God. Like, it's hard. You know, it's like a prop comedian. Like... What do I do now? You know, I put the balloon over my head and blowing it up to make it look like a chicken. Well, what do I do two years from now? Am I still doing the, the balloon well, over my head? I think for the gen- or the Globetrotters, that's why they have such a big roster, is that they rotate different players. Sure. Probably because it's that's like some bench depth. Right I, they, they've got the depth there. They've built it up. <laughs> and you build through the draft. Right. But it's yes. one where like yes. they've done it for like two months and yes. it's like, yeah, I need my break now. Uh, yeah, I cannot I, be the butt of this joke again and again. But... <laughs> Yeah, it's it's um the but they have created a you know a marketing niche for themselves, and you see other teams kind of stealing bits and bites of their game presentation. That's fine. Yeah. The generals need to win. That's, that's well, just we, get me one. Like, do you don't think okay, of a story like that, it, will that will be, be fire the coach? Do you know, like that's all over ESPN. <laughs> fire the coach. Yeah. How many coaching changes have they had? That yeah. would get them back in the news. That actually would Hell be smart. Yeah. That would yes. be top story in a lot of things. Of like, oh my god, the Globe Charters lost. Here's the video. Generals won. And then yeah. the Globe Charters go in for another 40 years. Yes. And people are throwing stuff at them as they walk off the court. Yeah. Boo, great. Boo this, man. No, I wouldn't want to be that Globe Charters team. No. Don't want to Shame. Lose. The shame. They'd be the full shame. But maybe one day. Maybe one day. Maybe we'll, we'll get the film and it'll be a glorious time. Fantastic. This might be the best idea Wanix had <laughs> since, <laughs> I've, since I've been on the show, which is only twice. Yes. So it's not saying much. It's not a large body of work, but it's a good idea. We'll see if we have any connections. We'll try and get you into a meeting with who runs the Harlem Globetrotters. Matthew Wanick does. Or will. There's a lot of great ideas I have for a lot of different things. You, <laughs> okay. you just, uh, we'll just keep it at the I'll pull you there and I can fix a lot of things. I, uh, yes. CFL, uh, yes. season-long fantasy. Get me in touch with Randy. He'll be at the dinner June 6th. I'll get yes, you a one-on-one. On one. Put, on, put me at his table. And oh, I will spend boy. the whole night talking about season-long fantasy. I don't know fantasy. if I will do that to him. That would be a bit cruel. <laughs> <laughs> I, this is good for the league. The Dunya is an amazing league, and we've had a league that has spawn off from us. Mm-hmm. The Krefer, f- 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 whatever that Dusty's in, okay, that isn't as good as our league, but it's there. Yeah. You've got two great CFL season long fantasy leagues in this city. We just want to expand it. Was there not fantasy a few years ago through CFL? It's yeah. not season long like this, oh, like what we're like, like week to week. What that I is, it's it. like it's yeah. the weekly build your roster. They still have it. CFL.ca, if you go on, oh, okay. I, I did it for a few weeks last year, and you, you get like a budget and you fill out your roster based on within mm. that budget, yeah. and each player is associated with money. Season long is you're drafting your team, it's your players. You could cut, you could pick up, you mm-hmm. could trade, and you go head to head with someone all year. Okay. And we're into year nine. Of our league. Wow. We're doing our ninth Part season. Part of my ignorance, is it a keeper league? No. We haven't you done should have keeper. one keeper spot. 
Maybe one day we'll add the keeper. I would. Maybe then one we day, could see really who's a good general manager. manager. Yeah. The best is just getting together and just talking about on the at like the championship night when we look back on the CFL season. We just talk about the players that didn't do well and players that did great for us and. It's so much fun. But yeah, so just get me in touch with Randy, okay. and I will push this out there. We'll it's a brilliant idea. Do. Dusty loves it. Dusty loves the idea. So if Dusty loves well, it, it's got to yeah. be great. There you go. He, they did the A&W Tuba thing today. Or whatever. Like I, I heard it. Yes, I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> the, only person who, huh? the only person who brought anything to that was the... Uh, he was a high school music teacher, right? Yes, yes. yes Santa Fex. I'm not shocked by that, based on the... Well, actually, Eric was... Somewhat in rhythm. Seemed okay. Yeah. He didn't like the triangle performance from Dusty. I thought it was incredibly weak, yeah. <laughs> what is someone who plays a triangle? An artist. Yeah, you would think that would be yes. what it is. He should put that on his uh, X bio. He hit it well, I think. In rhythm. In the right moments, I would feel. The first goal was, was poor from him. A little okay. bit better. He needs more reps. So we'll get film session later today. We'll put yeah. that up and with him and we'll point. Dahmer yes. says, you were wrong here. You did poor here. I love Be that. better. I love this love hate relationship. Uh, like when we went, he came to one of the games, sat in my seats, and Hernan's waving at us, and we're like, Dahmer. And Eric, Eric was having a great afternoon, and you just look and you saw Awanik, and you just. Yeah, you, yeah. Yeah, he's waving. He didn't want to wave back. Yeah. Just, There's a beef there. Yeah. We don't need to get into it, but. Well, there's no beef on my <laughs> end. <laughs> I love Unless it. you don't get me this full oh, well, the Awanek, table with Awanek Randy. does have that effect on people. Sort of <laughs> there a, you go, J-Mo. I don't think I do. Uh, really? No way. It's shocking. Well, I haven't pissed a lot of people we, off here yet. If we could pull yet, up the old the inbox. That's the thing. Oh, I haven't gone there yet with ours. Like, we haven't gone box. there. So I would get Jack doing the pre- and post-game show about him, and I'm like, he hasn't been on in like seven hours. That's staying power. <laughs> yeah. The yes. best is when they would think it was your Remchuk. They'd mistaken yes. for Remchuk and Remchuk would always get my hate yeah that's like, not perfect. fair to him no that's great no he deserved it Remchuk. he deserved it boy the inbox it was something else it was you would a... love our inbox oh I it, it, I, I it, would like, I've it's... seen you know I've jumped yeah. in occasionally and, and oh the nasty know, chat but even our chat. private one oh like the, the private the, yeah. the text line text lines me and Eric were talking after the first couple of months of this and it's just it's night and day from 1260 night you know and day and that's great to hear. And it's interesting because you clearly, you know, you've got a community and people that love the work you do and, and they're supportive and they they seem to enjoy, you know, what you're doing and, and the interaction. I always was amazed, and I've been talking for dollars for a very long time, that how angry that <laughs> Inbox got and how, and you thought, and I've said this before, we're performing for free. Yes, we're paid by our company, our employer, but are, we're not charging are you. Are you guys paid here? <laughs> Alan Mitchell you always joked about <laughs> that we were the low tide. We're, we're, we're the lowest rung yeah, entertainment. Yeah, on the entertainment ladder. Because we're, we're free. Right. And you don't have to pay anything for us. You know? So that gives you license to just absolutely no, like destroy the, them in the inbox. Oh, they would destroy us. And yeah. you think, how did I anger you so much? <laughs> what did I do? And I didn't, and like, call, I didn't charge you a thing for that opinion. None of that, that came here. No. None of that None came None of it transferred here. over. It was That's all good. the good came. And like we had like That's the good. filtration system or something that came through. And it just kept those people away. And it's it's been wonderful. No, it's positive. It's been great to... Yeah. But uh, I'll, I'll annoy someone at some point again. Yeah. I'm not, at some point. Soon. I'll get to that, but we got to get through at least a year That's of EST before I really start getting at it. I love um, the beef. So what's next for you guys in, in general when it comes to 75 and plans for this season? What's the next? Uh, I think I'm going to have lunch after this. and then. Um, but in terms of plans for 75, w believe it or not, we're still working on things. So we didn't unveil oh, yeah. everything on Monday. Um, uh, so <laughs> when, we, when we talked about this season back in the fall... Um, the team over there was like, let's just go for it. Let's just do it all. Let's do a big that week and let's do the dinner and let's do an alumni event. And I was just like, oh my gosh. And now every time I have an idea, sometimes I have to filter myself. I'm like, I shouldn't have said that because they're going to want to do it. So <laughs> I'm trying to go through some of those processes right now because we do have a couple of, of larger scale things that we're looking to do that week. Um, so we're continuing to filter through those plans and yeah, like yeah, I catch really, myself sometimes. You really have to be careful, and I was guilty of it too, where you just start layering and layering. You know, it's, I went out to the provincial archives, do a little research, and I was like, okay, Evan, I'll go. I'll take a look kind of what 
the expanse of what they have and some of the photographic images. And it's great. Like, I, you know, I could live in that building and just kind of go through stuff. But then you start going, I got to check myself here. I don't go down a rabbit hole of research because mm. the work's been done. You know, is that extra image, cool image of Normie Kwong going to make or break the dinner experience? The answer is no. So you have to say, okay, when is enough enough? You know, in the case of the dinner, we got to get to scripting. Right. You got to start building out the night because you can get, you start running in different directions. You really got to watch yourself. And, you know, they, again, not to, yes, they're young people with great energy, but it's a long year. Yep. It's a long, long season. And, you know, yes, if someone will say, well, the games only come every other week or whatever it is, doesn't matter because when you're not playing a home game, you're getting ready to play home game. Yeah, I'm getting flashbacks to Farewell Rexall and the opening of the new arena. That's the same thing. That you guys, yeah, I could imagine that would have been a ride. And you guys are buckling up for it. And Jim, well, you're right. Right. Yep. You know, is it is it essential to do or is it nice to do? Yep. You know, and that's what you could you have to ask. You've got to run that sort of, you know, through that, that that's equation. A good filter. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. Uh Congrats on the Thank launch you. of the start of 75. Best of luck. These days make me just can't wait for summer because yep. yeah, to be Likewise. around the team and get them on the field and, and start watching games, but also see the whole celebration, see everyone come back, uh, see the whole alumni. So uh, thank you for coming in. We'll uh, take best uh, of luck. a medium and a large in those jackets. Uh, medium, large right here. and we're good Maybe to go. a small for me. It depends. Okay. I'll need to try them yeah, on. Because that's, that's one part of the deal, right? Okay. Of course. Yeah. 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 So. We'll get you guys to run through that when you're having your uh, fantasy conversation with the commission. <laughs> Perfect. Love yeah. it. Love it. Thank you. Um, keep it locked to, to the Elks all over the place, uh, including their website, goelks.com. Shop.goelks.com. You got her. Boom. Yeah. For their merch. You can buy it already. They are beautiful. Glasses, jackets, jacket, hoodie. Beautiful hey, stuff. Six uh, o'clock or lager would be delicious in this. I agree. There you go. I agree. Uh, he's Dave Jamison. He's Evan Dom. Tommy's old Matawanek. Thanks for tuning in to the EST angle. Tommy's back at noon with the oil stream. Him yep. and Dusty. Talk uh, lines. Up next, though, it is the lock shop. Dusty, Huss. I think Pat Gregor will come by to talk Houston Open to the PGA as well. Uh, that's all coming up here on Edmonton Sports Talk on EdmontonSportsTalk.com, iHeartRadio, tune in, Edmonton Sports Talk uh, YouTube channel, and also your next chance to qualify for the EST Flyway, the keyword coming with Dusty and Huss during the lock shop. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. We're back with the hangout tomorrow, 9 o'clock, right here on Edmonton Sports Talk. Let's go, let's go. There you go, right in front of the camera. First time guest, long time listener, fan of the original draft commissioner. Welcome to the EST Hango presented by White Claw Hard Seltzer. The difference is clear. Matt Awanek, Tom Zola with here. Joining us today, 